The darkness around surrounds a girl with snow-white hair, as if absorbing her into its abyss in order to capture her. The eyes are difficult to open, so they remain closed while the heroine tries to understand what is happening. The fall down still doesn't end. I want to scream in order to appear and remain significant in order to wake up again. Not even a few minutes pass before the beauty suddenly opens her eyes. Horror itself envelops the body because of what is happening around. Attention automatically switches to the legs, which are connected to each other. There is a stone hanging on them, which pulls them deeper and deeper to the bottom. Attempts to untie the rope are almost in vain. After a few minutes, it still happens. The beauty makes enough maneuvers, and the stone falls. Now salvation is very close. The air is running out, but the beauty is trying her best to swim up to get to land. Breaking out from under a thick layer of water that did not allow breathing, the girl begins to gasp for air, realizing that she almost died. The lake seems darker than the sky at night due to its depth, but this no longer matters, because the blonde crawls onto the ground nearby, which seems to be the very salvation. Looking back, the girl notices something. She doesn't want to take risks again, so she's not going to look at the surface of the water, but she's pulled to the side, carefully sitting down on the very edge of the shore. The girl looks at her reflection. A beautiful middle-aged girl with snow-white hair and blue eyes looks back in surprise. Thoughts about everything around do not come immediately, just like awareness itself. The girl asks herself a quiet question, because she doesn't know who is in front of her. A man, a woodcutter passing by, stops for just a few minutes and looks at the lady. He states the fact that the lady is wet to the skin. Just about to leave, the guy warns the blonde that she shouldn't stay here for a long time because it may be unsafe. The beast from Claude's castle starts hunting after sunset, so if you don't get away from the lake, he will catch the girl and eat her without even blinking. Only now the beauty realized that she was next to a lake, near which on the other side there was a castle, which was reflected on the water. The gaze switches to the turrets, which are visible in an even formation in the distance, along with the snow-white beast that stands on top. The woman looks at the animal in shock as the man reminds her that she has at least two more years. Next, the young man says the girl's name. Amelie turns around in surprise, not understanding where she has already heard this. The old man chuckles. He doesn't believe that the maiden could even forget her own name, so it doesn't mean anything to him. Jumping up from her seat, the blonde runs up to the man. She asks what the two-year statement that was said means. The old man sighs heavily. He looks sadly at the lady, who obviously still cannot accept the obvious. All people with silver hair eventually fall prey to the beast from the castle. The lady won't be able to escape because she will simply be eaten. The beauty repeats to herself in disbelief what she just heard. The guy interrupts her muttering, asking her to go home because it's starting to get dark outside. What happened definitely means something, but it becomes obvious that no one will answer such a question. The name of the virgin also raises many questions. A blurry, vague memory from a past life appears in my head. The brunette with short hair decided to take an important step so the memories showed her lying on the floor. I couldn't remember anything else, because my thoughts seemed to be swallowed up by fog. The blonde grabs her head, which suddenly hurts. All this sounds and looks strange, but it is clear that Claude Castle is somewhere nearby, which means that you can find out more from the other residents. Realization suddenly hits your head. Castle Claude is something that the heroine already knew about, as well as about animals and about making sacrifices. I didn't want to believe it. When the baby was still just a child, she was not interested in anything except one special book, which she successfully read to the gills. Thoughts about the book were interrupted by a woman with a basket of groceries, who, noticing Amelie, calls her back home. She was already tired of waiting for her. Grabbing the girl's hand, the lady pulls her towards herself, and then lets go with disgust, because it turns out that she is wet. The girls move forward along the path towards a huge house, in which bright lights are shining in almost all the windows, meaning that someone is there. Laughing uncertainly, the blonde quietly asks if it is true that she works here, to which the woman, frowning, replies that they live in this house. Sighing, the lady makes the girl go change clothes. All her clothes are completely wet due to getting into the water, so she is uncomfortable. Unable to stand it any longer, the lady screams at the blonde. She asks her not to fool her, although she never expected anything more than this from the dregs of society. Approaching some kind of closet that looks like a barn, the woman points to the door, here you can change your wet clothes into something more suitable. Then, without further ado, the lady pushes the girl in the back, as if hinting that she needs to be much more agile in terms of movements. Entering the room, 
the lady discovered that there was absolutely nothing inside that could be mistaken for new clothes. There is a piece of paper on the table as the only reminder. Grabbing a piece of paper, the beauty carefully examines it, but is not immediately able to understand what exactly she is talking about. A will was written on a piece of paper, which did not say much, because the girl at such a young age did not have much to leave. If you think about it this way, at the beginning of the whole story, Emily had a stone tied to her foot, which means that she was the one who wanted to end everything in exactly this way. The blonde can't believe that all this was true. This is the second life in which things almost end in this way. She squeezes the paper forcefully in her hands. Attention is drawn to silver hair, which flows in light waves straight down the body. Virgo carefully examines the beautiful color. The words that were said by the man near the lake can't get out of my head. Everyone with blonde hair eventually becomes a victim. Thoughts are transferred to a book that used to be a favorite. It was like a reminder of what happened. This only meant one thing. The lady had been reborn. Now the heroine magically finds herself in the world of a fairy tale. It didn't seem like the worst thing, but the character's position did not suit the young lady because she would be sacrificed. There is complete silence in the castle, which is completely parallel to Amelie's room. Mr. Lionel is called by one of the servants, who distracted him from something. A man climbs over one of the castle towers, while a young man gets down on one knee, asking if he can help. He gets rejected. The man comes closer to the animal with snow-white fur, pointing somewhere into the distance. Next, they plan to go straight south for another hunt. The morning came quite unnoticed, just like the working day that awaited the maid, who had not slept at all during the night. The blonde still couldn't believe that she managed to be reborn and find herself in a fairy tale that had previously been her favorite. She tried to accept it. The worst thing was that, serving as a constant reminder, the beauty knew that the girl in the body she found herself in would die very soon. Passing by one of the panoramic windows, the beauty looks at her reflection, which seems to beckon her to come closer and look back. If you think about it this way, the girl in the story was incredibly beautiful, which of course gave her a lot of privileges that turned out to be useful. The snow-white hair was also wonderful, but it turned out that the others didn't think so at all, judging by the reaction of others. For some reason, the servants who always surrounded the beauty treated her arrogantly and constantly whispered behind her back, which was incredibly annoying. The headmaid, who noticed Amelie looking at the glass, shouts at her back to stop shirking her work. This arrangement of things did not suit her. Quietly saying something in your ear, the lady clarifies the situation. Lady Lenoa, who just went out onto the balcony to get some fresh air, is looking at them. Lady Lenoa was Amelie's younger sister, a girl with beautiful wheat hair that seemed to glow in the sun, just like her smile. Although these two heroines were sisters, they were never alike. They are too different, and this could never be taken away. The animal's future victims are treated in the most horrendous way possible, and this is what separated the two girls from each other. Amelie was truly sorry, because although she was born into a noble family, she, of course, faced terrible discrimination. In addition to everything that happened, the maiden was also obliged to die very soon, because two years was not considered such a long time in such a matter. The virgin did not want to die in this way, but the world remained too cruel. It seems that nothing will change even after some time. According to the plot of the book, there are ordinary people and animal-like people in the world, who, of course, live in separate territories so as not to disturb others. The kingdom of humans is ruled by an established king. He was elected by the people at regular meetings, and he moved into the government. His name is Aurelian. At the end of the fairy tale, which the girl read as a child, the prince from the kingdom kills the animal, so humanity finally gets the opportunity to live normally. The name of the hero who saves everyone around is Lumiere. He was considered the best knight and swordsman, so he was able to easily kill the animal. The beast will be killed when Lumiere turns 20 years old. There is probably still a very long wait until that moment, however. Not knowing exactly how long, the lady decides to ask everything. Turning to one of the maids who is cleaning nearby, the lady asks her how old Prince Lumiere of the palace is now. The brunette answers mockingly, because such a question seems strange to her. He and Amelie are the same age, so he is 16 years old like her. The beauty freezes in horror. This is the number that is spinning in her head, which makes it clear that nothing else will help her, no matter how much she wants it. There are still four whole years left, which, as luck would have it, will drag on incredibly long and hard. At this rate, the virgin will die much faster and will not experience joy. Perhaps it was better for Amelie to really die than to know that essence and the future that ultimately awaits her after two years. 
Then, when the girl was sitting on the bank of the river, she noticed the same beast that was walking along the castle wall. She felt like they were looking at her. The girl didn't really want to become someone's food, given that now life was just beginning, because, as it turned out, the heroine was only sixteen years old. A life that can no longer be saved turned out the way it turned out. The girl had no choice but to give up and wait for her fate in the future. There was only a simple chance that the blonde had not just been reborn in Amelie's body. Perhaps she could change fate and save an innocent man. If the young lady has a chance, she can try to resist the fate that will soon overtake her. She had no choice. From that very moment, the beauty began to think about how exactly she could change her fate, which seemed like something that was impossible to change under such circumstances. So far, the only thing that could save the girl was Prince Lumiere, who would kill that very beast in the future, which would not come soon. Only this legendary man will be able to kill the beast, which at the moment is still hunting peaceful people who suit his taste. Nervous laughter bursts out of your chest on its own. The lady had no choice but to try her luck with Lumiere, who was still very young. The lady had no choice. She had to inspire the boy to do great things, even if she had no idea how exactly to do this. The blonde was not the main character who could do absolutely everything. She is a minor character with little potential. It seems that the book did not say anything about her, so it became clear that the situation was dire. The lady did not even have the opportunity to talk to the prince. Attention is drawn to the sister, who, peacefully reading, is on the balcony very close to the heroine, who is thinking about salvation. Linoa's younger sister is a real aristocrat. This cannot be taken away from her because she is too beautiful in her actions and thoughts. A plan emerges in your head on its own, which doesn't seem so absurd, despite how much will need to be done to put it into action. Noticing the arrogant look that her sister turned to the maid, the blonde turns around sharply. She is not sure if they will be able to start any kind of conversation. My thoughts are interrupted by the main maid, who shouts something from afar. It becomes clear that she is talking about lunch, so the girl puts off all her business. While in the dining room, the blonde sits down and carefully straightens her hair as she accepts the food that is being served to her. She takes a bite of a loaf of bread. Realization comes faster than a comet, because the bread turned out to be completely stale. The maid almost broke all her teeth. No one even pays attention to the girl's attempts to bite off the bread, because the maids are discussing Linoa's coming out into the world. It was in that year that the first show was supposed to happen, but they didn't worry about it, because the girl was a beauty. A bunch of suitors also ran after her. One of the girls sighs heavily. Sometimes she was jealous because she also wanted to receive some of the love that was given to others. Another maid laughs lightly, saying that she has no relationships with men, but they are excellent with money. Words about love gave the heroine a hint. She remembered that the prince was always in love with someone, but never mentioned who exactly. The book only said that the young man fell in love at the age of 15 with the daughter of an aristocrat, whom he met in the forest quite by accident on the way home. The couple met before the night of the full moon, which already made it clear what exactly this would lead to in the end. Lumiere was head over heels in love with his new chosen one, because over time it began to gain new momentum. Love at first sight seemed wonderful. The man spent almost all his free time with the blonde, which made it clear how much he appreciated her. All this meant was that if the lady went into the forest on the night of the full moon, she would most likely be able to meet the prince who would be there. The girl's thoughts are interrupted by her friends, who easily ask why she froze and stopped talking or even listening to others. Smiling lightly, the blonde asks for forgiveness for her carelessness. She did not want to bother anyone with her thoughtfulness, which was not inherent in her. The plan that appeared in my head seemed absurd, but it was not worth abandoning. The lady simply had no other choice. If the maid did not act as she intended, she would end up with even more problems than she had before. Very soon, the girl realized how naive she was. Having tried to get to the meeting place, the lady very much regretted it. In the forest, the girl met the guards, who, in addition to all this, only interfered with the plan, which itself would have failed even without them. This all happened for a reason, but because Lumiere had long been in love with someone else. He chose another lady who became everything to him. This person was Linoa, who was the heroine's younger sister. This turn of events seemed the most unexpected of all. Instead of thinking about her sister's future, the princess did not even offer a helping hand, hiding behind the prince, who ordered the girl to be taken away. The guards grabbed the lady by the arms and dragged her away. Everything was destroyed, which meant there was no point in it at all. The meetings of the couple in the book were carefully planned, so they had to remain secret, but in the end, this did not achieve anything, because each of them was planned.
Now, sitting in a dungeon with a cold floor and walls, the blonde understood what a terrible mistake she had made by doing all this. The prince could not leave the castle alone and somehow end up in the forest all alone, because that was stupidity. At that moment, when the girl came up with everything she was going to do, she could not suspect what ultimately happened, but everything changed. Sitting on her knees next to the guards in the main hall of the royal palace, the lady regretted absolutely everything that had happened earlier. She was accused of deciding to kill the prince, since she tracked him down. The king did not accept objections, because by the color of the girl's hair, he immediately understood what was said from her lips. It didn't matter. Due to the contract that was signed, the king, of course, could not execute the girl who arrived at the palace, but he found a better plan. The blonde no longer had the right to agreements or objections, which seemed like something she wanted to do during this time. Instead of simply letting the girl go, the man decided to give her to Claude Castle and feed her to the terrible beasts who were not against such breakfast or dinner. The realization of the words spoken fell like a huge, heavy burden right on the heroine's head. She did not want to accept the new reality that overtook her. The screams that the captive made were ignored in every possible way. This was the end of her story, because she was in the last pages of the book. Castle Claude seemed something terrible. Once the lady saw him in her nightmares, but in the end, she found herself right in front of the doors of this terrible place. The guards opened the gate, ordering the blonde to go inside, no longer considering that they want to talk to her about anything other than that. Handing the girl over to the other guards, they leave while the others lead the lady forward along a cold corridor with torches on the walls. Entering the main hall, the men kneel on one knee, telling the wolf that they have brought the one who was handed over by the king from the ordinary world. The huge monster slowly steps forward, almost bending over the small figure and sniffing her hair, which gets into her face. Looking at the face, which seemed impossible to notice due to its similarity with the other animals, the girl realizes that it was the one who was looking at her from the castle. The eyes are filled with horror, because fate has already been decided. The lady has nowhere else to run, even if she wanted to scream and run somewhere into the distance, away from this place. The girl, frozen, appears directly in front of the wolf, who moves back a little. Now you definitely won't be able to get out, even if you really want to. The animal looks thoughtfully to the side. He seems to have his own thoughts on this matter, although it doesn't depend on anything, because in the end, he will eat the maiden anyway. The beauty's heart is beating wildly, as if it will soon jump out of her chest and run to her heels. The pupils shrink in horror. Once in a past life, the king of beasts did not frighten a little girl at all, who did not think that he posed any danger. In her new life, the blonde was very scared, as if everything had turned upside down, causing her to gasp for air to calm down before doing anything. Being right a few centimeters from the beast, the lady realized that she was nothing more than a simple meal that would become the next victim. The girl tries to back away, even if she understands perfectly well that this makes absolutely no sense as such. She falls to her knees, no longer able to maintain her balance. Silver wool is very eye-catching. It reminds the heroine of her own hair, but it's better to forget about it, because this is not the best time to think about such things. The girl closes her eyes in fear because she understands that the end has come for her, but nothing happens. A handsome young man with blonde hair appears before her. The guy chuckles and then turns away. Emotions that are usually accessible to other people around are not read on his face. The heroine slowly opens her eyes, batting them in surprise. She expected the worst, but for some reason nothing happened, as if the man had decided to let her live. The guy turns around and then heads towards the throne, which is located in the middle of the room nearby. The girl quietly asks who he is. The king sits on the throne and rests his hand on his cheek in boredom. He looks around the room, but does not seem to find anything interesting, completely ignoring the girl and her questions that she asked. The blonde bows his head. She doesn't know what she should do next, because the ignoring remains the same, but no one was going to let her go. Finally gathering his thoughts, the man lazily says that his Lionel, he is the ruler of this castle, and this has been going on for several years now. Emily quietly asks, as if stating a fact, whether the guy was a wolf, to which he grins. Such a question seems too stupid even for him. This is definitely true, because the hair color is exactly the same as the coat color. It is very similar to the hair color of the main character herself, and she does not miss it. Sighing, the man continues the conversation. He asks what the beauty is doing here, to which she reminds that she was sacrificed to an animal. Frowning, the guy reminds her that there are still two years before she was supposed to be sent here and orders her to leave. 
He says nothing more, judging by his interest. Unable to get up from the floor, the girl still looks at the throne, asking if they are going to eat her. It is very difficult to believe in your happiness. This is another stupid question, because Lionel has already ordered to leave, which means it makes sense to obey the words. The girl is silent. She doesn't know what to say, even if a thousand questions are spinning in her head that will not find their answers. She wants to understand why they left her. Looking around, the beauty realized that there was no one else in the room. A little earlier, because of fear, it was very difficult for her to understand this, although it was quite real. Everything is very different from the Aurelian Castle, where Amelie used to be. She understood this perfectly, although she did not accept it. Someone's head is leaning into his back in a bow. The girl does not immediately notice who exactly is standing right behind her. Carefully turning around, the girl notices a man with the same snow-white hair as the king's, only one shade darker. The guy quickly unties the ropes that bind his hands, while simultaneously introducing himself as the right hand of His Majesty Lionel, named Hyde. Quietly pronouncing the gentleman's name, the lady clarifies again, because she does not believe that she really can finally go far away. The young man nods. According to the contract, no one from the castle can do anything to the woman until she is fully eighteen years old, while she is only sixteen now. The ropes have been loosened, so they now fall easily to the ground. They free their hands, which can finally move again. The blonde turns to the man, trying to argue something. She wouldn't want to be eaten, but she didn't understand what the whole problem was. Pointing to the door, which was already generously opened, the blonde orders the girl to return back to her home. The guy bows down while the girl quietly leaves the castle, hanging her head down in sadness. Nothing else mattered. The door slams behind the lady's back, and the heroine herself walks further along the bridge, which leads into the distance into the forest, from which you can easily exit to the estate. Although they said in the castle that you could leave and live a quiet life for at least two more years, this was impossible because of what happened earlier. There was no way back, because it was cut short by actions that were taken specifically by the heroine. She was the one who ruined everything for herself. The girl had silver hair from her birth, and this meant that in the house in which she used to live, she was not welcome, because they knew what fate was expected. There was no room on the estate for the girl who had to be sacrificed. This was one of the reasons why the beauty worked as a maid all her life. Approaching the guard standing near the gate, the girl, almost stuttering, plucks up courage and conveys the news from the palace. They told her it was too early and sent her back. The brunette nods, although in his heart he doesn't understand why this happened. He's not sure why exactly this was done, but promises that he will return now. Left completely alone, the beauty looks around, noticing one of the maids, who, as usual, is cleaning the yard on schedule. Coming back, the man quietly says that, no matter how strange it is for him to say this, the blonde has already been fired from her position as a maid. Trying to object to something, the beauty reminds that she is a daughter, and therefore part of the family in which she grew up. The pitiful attempts are cut short, because the young man again repeats that he is very sorry, even if this is not at all noticeable from his facial expression. The girl understands that all this is pointless. She bows her head, saying that she understands. Apologizing for the disturbance, the maiden steps aside. What happened was quite expected. The estate had already gotten rid of it, so, of course, no one wanted to return it back to its rightful place where it had previously been. There was no peace in the city either. She had to cover her hair with cloth because people around were whispering about how much the girl looked like wolves. Passing by one of the doors, the girl notices that a job advertisement has been posted on it. It was a bakery where there was a chance to get a job. Knocking on wood, the blonde carefully enters the doorway, greeting the baker, who, as usual, is laying out bread for morning delivery. The man smiles welcomingly, but then notices the hair color peeking out from under his hood. He states the fact that the lady has silver hair that stands out. Almost pushing the beauty out onto the street, the guy shouts after her, telling her not to come even a meter closer to him and his bakery. In the next store, but this time for clothes, a similar situation occurred. The woman refused reminding that even if she accepted the worker, she would scare away all the clients. Another store also ended up somewhere behind, because the man rudely refused, reminding him that he was not a fool to agree to such a thing. No one was going to hire a criminal, given the fact that this hair color was considered something forbidden for those who existed. At the end of the day, the lady concluded that there was no place for her anywhere that she would not go and where she would not try. No one wanted to give her shelter or help, Everyone around considered the girl a victim, which she would very soon become, 
or criminal, even without any explanation. There was no happy ending to a fairy tale like this for someone like her. Even if she saw a happy ending as a child, it was only for the prince and his princess. Prince Lenoa will be the ones who will live happily together. They will pretend that they care very much about the people, while this will not be entirely true. No one will care about the rest. While chaos is happening in the kingdom, no one pays attention because they cannot change the essence of the wolves or themselves. Lenoa and Lumiere are no comparison because they allow innocent people to die or wander without the right to a normal life like theirs. Compared to this couple, even Lionel is much more humane because at least he cares more about his subjects. All this time, the beauty was sitting on a cold tile, which was laid out along the doors of the castle, from where the wolf now came out and was heading out to hunt. The man stops a step away from the girl, who gathers her strength and asks him to just eat her first. The people around hardly care. It is not so important if the animal breaks the terms of the contract and does it two years earlier. Nothing will change at all anyway. The girl lowers her head to her knees, trying not to cry. She really has absolutely nowhere to go, even if she wanted to do so. The girl will not be able to wait two years, because if she is not eaten now, then she will end up in some ditch without any means of subsistence. The animal quietly comes closer without saying a word. He lowers himself and slowly removes the cape that was placed on his head to hide the color of his hair. The following actions seem even stranger because the animal picks up the heroine by the collar. He's going to carry her in the other direction. Emily understands perfectly well that she will now be eaten and this will be the end of her life. But she doesn't care anymore. She has suffered enough throughout her life. The way things are going, it will be much better. There is no point in this because it would only get worse, so the end will be beneficial. The girl is hanging upside down, looking somewhere at the tiles under the man's feet, which are flashing with furious speed. She no longer cares at all about how fate will turn out because she is tired. There is no point left in trying to change something, so it will be as it will be. In your head, like a palette of colors, all the terrible moments that have ever happened in life are displayed. The sister did not pay attention and the rest of the people threw stones and humiliated her. It's better to die than to live a life where a lady is treated like this. Sighing heavily, the beauty still does not pay attention to anything around her, because she understands that the end is very close. There is no salvation for her, or a kind Robin Hood, who could save her soul by taking the girl from the King of Beasts and saving her from being eaten. The gate slowly opens right in front of the wolf's nose. He carefully, slowly, and majestically steps inside, heading forward along the corridor to the main hall. The lady seemed to notice something, but didn't even have time to think about it because her body was thrown to the floor. Emily gathers the strength to at least take a sitting position, and oddly enough, she manages to do what she intended. She calls out to Lionel, who is completely oblivious, turning around and proudly heading in a completely different direction. Trying to understand why the heroine was dragged into the palace and not even eaten almost from the threshold, the lady completely loses her vigilance, so she does not notice the man who is approaching from behind. He says that even if they wanted to change something, they do not have the right to do so. The girl quietly asks again, somewhere in the depths of her soul, hoping that in the end at least someone will decide to give a normal answer. Instead, a blonde man with fine hair points to the door. He insistently offers to go to other chambers in order to leave His Highness alone in the throne room. Obediently following, the lady understands that she does not even have the right to somehow resist or express her personal opinion. She has lost too much, so now, right before her end, she will not stick her neck out. She would like to know where they are taking her. Perhaps the place where the main character was taken was a prison cell, which was located somewhere on one of the floors. This would be quite logical, given that the beauty was a captive and a victim, namely one who would be eaten very soon, without any regrets. The road to the new apartment did not last very long. The man led the lady further down the corridor, and they stopped near one of the oak doors. The heroine went inside and gasped in surprise, because instead of a cage, she was looking at a bright room with a bed and other decor. Without allowing anyone to object again, or somehow think about what was happening, the guy bows, saying that it's time for him to go. He is not obliged to report where and why, and obviously was not going to explain why such a room belonged to the future victim of the King of Beasts. The girl stutters a little. She cannot utter a word, but she understands perfectly well that she has no right to miss the opportunity to find out at least something until the moment the young man disappears from sight. 
Understanding at a glance, the blonde says as if it were a fact that this is Amelie's new room. The girl's eyes widen, becoming like two huge balls that are ready to roll out at any moment due to surprise, which in itself overtook her. She couldn't believe that they had allocated at least some normal room for her, given all the comfort. The man almost immediately leaves the room, saying that he has to go. Virgo fails to stop him, even if she tries to explain that it will not be safe. She can escape from such a room at any time without any obstacles. Running out of the room after the blonde man, who finally stopped, the beauty looks ingratiatingly into his eyes, asking if he is going to take at least some measures. At a minimum, the doors could be locked with a key in order to have a guarantee. Grunting in response, Hyde says that no one is really going to lock up Amelie, who organized a concert because of this. No one is holding her, so at any moment she, of course, can leave the castle and go home or wander. Seeing the expression on his interlocutor's face, the young man smiles just slightly. He tries to cover his mouth with his hand so that it does not become noticeable, but almost all efforts remain in vain. The lady notices such a strange manifestation of normal emotions for him. After what happened, the guy did not say another word. Only after a few minutes, he bowed again and headed into the distance of the corridor, away, in order to return to his duties in the palace, which were already waiting for him. I couldn't believe that what was happening around me was truly reality and not fake. They didn't even lock the lady, just leaving her in the condition she was in. According to Hyde, she had two more years, so no one would be eating anyone for now. Sighing heavily, the lady realizes that she will have to spend a lot of time figuring out how everything works here. Leaning back on the soft bed, the blonde, gritting her teeth, still admits that she has a rather beautiful room that seems pleasant to live in. The gaze darted towards the chest of drawers standing next to the bed. There's some kind of package lying there, which makes it clear that there is still a change of clothes on the chest of drawers that you can change into at night. You cannot sleep in street clothes in a clean bed. The girl didn't want to admit it to herself, but in the end, she did it, because this room was more comfortable than her home. A smile of bliss spreads across the pale face, even despite the unpleasant memories that strive to creep into consciousness. Everything around was not so important. If the lady were put in a dungeon, she would almost not care, because in the end, everyone knows the fate that is reserved for people with silver-colored blonde hair. The beauty will be eaten, so the end cannot be avoided. Morning came completely unnoticed. The lady did not immediately realize that the time of day had changed, but light rays of the morning sun began to break through the curtains. Rubbing her eyes, the beauty realizes in surprise that she didn't even notice how she fell asleep. Memories of yesterday were spinning in my head like a record that had stuck so no one could replace it. The blonde couldn't believe that after she couldn't find shelter and didn't know where to go, she was accepted into the palace. The Castle of Wolves is a specific place, but for some reason, in one day, it began to seem more comfortable. The lady carefully gets out of bed and heads somewhere into the distance of her room, closer to the wooden door, to check the lock. The door gives in easily as soon as the beauty presses a little with her palm. She quietly jumps out, looking around. Hyde's words were true, because there really wouldn't have been a soul to guard outside. In the distance of the corridor, several maids with the same beautiful white hair could be seen. They were chatting about something, but when they noticed the guest, they turned away from their conversations, turning to the side to examine the one who had slipped out. Memories of what happened on the streets flashed through my head. People and servants in the castle usually reacted negatively to such hair, so, of course, they did not miss the opportunity to mock or laugh right in the face of the young heroine, which she could not stand. Sadly lowering her head, the blonde turns around in order to leave as quickly as possible and not hear any further reproaches in her direction. Already going into the distance, the girl hears the voice of a maid who says, Good morning. She freezes literally for a few seconds in order to digest what is happening. Quietly saying the same thing in response, the blonde is about to leave again, but she is simply stopped the second time. A girl with greenish blonde hair greets Amelie, introducing herself as Elijah. She will be the one who is going to help the mistress in everything. The girl staggers back. Elijah bows to a curtsy, as if saluting or greeting the lady one more time, while she quietly asks if it is true. She is not a mistress, and never will be, since the victim does not have such a privilege. Quietly asking what it means to help, the beauty lowers her eyes to the floor. She didn't think she needed help, 
much less that anyone in their right mind would want to help her in this palace. While waiting for an answer, the blonde accidentally glances down at her attire, which does not look appropriate for someone who lives here. She quickly decides to leave, saying that she will return very soon. The girl just needs to quickly change clothes. Yesterday, the beauty fell asleep and completely forgot about changing into new clothes, which were placed on the chest of drawers next to the bed. Just about to leave the room, the maiden was stopped by Elijah, who grabbed her hand. She pulls the heroine forward with her. Without ceremony with the new mistress, the blonde sits her down on a chair near the table with a mirror. The girl lets out a quiet cry from surprise and from the speed of actions that are happening around her. She doesn't seem too confident in what she's doing. The door of one of the dresser cabinets opens, revealing several necessary hairstyle tools. One of them turns out to be a mini mirror, as well as a comb and a toothed comb for detangling the hair on the top of the head, where it has become matted after sleep. Getting to work, the woman takes one of the combs and carefully begins to comb her hair along the entire length. They are soft and easy to give in, so nothing will affect it. The girl sits quietly for several minutes and then turns towards Ilya, who, still undistracted, continues to do what they started with. Not knowing how to find words, the beauty asks why the maiden is courting her as if she were not a captive in their palace, but a mistress. The girl again reminds that she is just a victim who has only two years left. There is still no answer because Ilya continues to silently comb his hair. Amelie turns back to the mirror she is looking at. The maid straightens the strands after she has set aside the necessary items. She thoughtfully looks at the beautiful color of her hair, which, like silver, casts the light of the sun. After a while, the blonde quietly says only that the lady has beautiful hair, which everyone around could envy. Looking up from looking at the reflection in the mirror, the girl asks again because she cannot believe what she just heard. The heroine does not quite understand this behavior in a girl who, it seemed, should have behaved completely differently. She gets up from her seat, moving back a little, while asking what this performance is about. Beauty is nothing more than food for the king of beasts, so she should not be treated in such a way. What was said seems strange, so Elijah quietly agrees. She doesn't say a single word anymore, but continues to back away with her back to the exit, but ends up at the window. Turning back, behind the glass, you can see two figures, which are immediately clear by the color of their hair. Looking at the people talking, the girl realizes that she definitely knows one of them. Hyde was the one who led the lady into the room, while his interlocutor was the wolf who dragged the lady into the castle and abandoned her in the throne room after what happened. Turning away from the glass and trying to drive away unpleasant memories, the girl quietly asks Ilya if she can turn into a terrible beast, just like the rest of the inhabitants of this castle. There must be a logical explanation for everything. Without expressing any emotion, the beauty chuckles. She can't do this, no matter how much she wants to. There is no need for an explanation, because obviously the maid does not feel a wild desire to communicate with the girl who was dragged here. The blonde silently looks at her interlocutor. She cannot believe what was said, because until that moment, she believed that every person can turn into a wolf. The maid was once again amazed by her reaction, even if it seemed to her that it did not bring any pleasure. Instead of somehow commenting on her answers, the girl turns to the mistress again. She doesn't have time to answer anything, because it was purely out of politeness. Ilya asks not to address her as you, because there was absolutely no need for that. Sitting down in a curtsy, the maiden says goodbye to the hostess. She's going to go get her something to eat, so she'll feel a lot better after her sleep and everything that happened. There are already too many experiences in your head that are completely unnecessary. The girl does not understand what is happening at all, but still collects her thoughts. She needs to quickly figure out everything that is happening, Otherwise, everything may not end in the best possible way. You can't relax, even if they treat her well here. Coming here, the blonde thought that she would just end up being eaten, but in the end, it seems that the people around her care about her condition, so they ask her to feel comfortable and eat well. Falling onto the bed, which has already been changed, the girl looks thoughtfully at the ceiling. She cannot understand why she should be taken care of so well if in the end, the outcome will be predetermined literally in two years, and after death, she can be forgotten like a bad dream. It was unpleasant to realize, but the heroine could not even ask someone about what was happening. She understood that the questions continued to accumulate, thereby forming an unbearable burden that would over time crush Amelie with its weight. 
the thoughts were completed, so the girl realized that she was incredibly bored in the castle. Sighing, she slowly gets out of bed and goes to the window. Behind the glass you can see a forest and many, many green treetops. She was allowed to walk around the palace, but no one talked about the street. The layout of things that will happen in the future did not quite suit the main character. It turned out that she would be obliged to spend the next two years in her room without thinking about anything. She had no choice, even if the man had clearly said at first that she could go home. Instead of staying indoors, the beauty decides to take advantage of her privileges, so she quickly slips out into the corridor, closing the door behind her. She was told that she had the right to go to other rooms, so no one could charge her for walking around. First of all, the young lady moves into the distance, going down and noticing one of the stairs with beautiful windows. She doesn't immediately understand where the steps lead, but obviously they could be used to get to the first floor and explore other rooms. There was no one around at all who could say anything, or at least communicate with the victim. The castle seemed completely empty, as if it had been abandoned. If the lady had not previously seen Ilya and several other maids, she would have definitely thought that only Lionel and Hyde, whom she had seen a little earlier in the throne room, lived here. The virgin decides to walk through several more rooms to check, but door after door opens, and behind each of them the beauty does not find a single living soul. This place is very different from the Aurelian castle, because even the book talked about it. On one of the pages in the book about the monster, it was clearly noted that there were a lot of servants in the Aurelian castle. Literally, in every room, there were at least several of them who tried to keep the area clean and maintained order so that the king and prince would enjoy living on the estate. The number of guards in the palace also reached a huge number, which only increased every year or even every month. They were all close to the prince and tried to protect his highness from attack or from other adversities that could sneak in behind him. Castle Claude was completely empty. After exploring all the rooms, the lady walked into another corridor, in which there was only one window that gave light light from the sun through the glass. The light illuminated a deserted space in which it seemed that no one had ever lived in it before. As you know, in the fairy tale, the whole plot revolved only around the prince, who was the main character. This was quite logical, because the plot could not be focused on the same Emily. The young man's chosen one also fell into the light of the glory that fell on them. The injustice seemed too tedious, because in the end neither Castle Claude nor anyone else was talked about in the publication. There was no reason for this. It was just that the author was the one who decided the fate of the heroes. Thinking about why everything was happening this way, the maiden herself did not notice how she walked further than she probably should have. She stopped in front of a huge door with a beautiful snow-white pattern. The door led to another room, which was most likely locked. The room was not locked, which incredibly surprised the heroine, but she did not dare to attach any importance to this, but simply went inside. Looking around, Amelie realized that this was the throne room where she was once led at the very beginning of her journey. Desert lived even here, despite the status of the premises. Completely forgetting herself, the girl almost fell out of reality, again plunging into her thoughts, but steps were heard behind her. The beauty, trying to control herself, slowly turns around so as not to be frightened by the one who came. A few centimeters away stands Lionel, who has reincarnated as a man. The girl freezes. She doesn't know what to say to the man standing opposite her, his eyebrows furrowed, as if someone had offended him. Lowering her head, the beauty begins to apologize, without even saying the reason, to which she is stopped. There is no point in apologizing, because in any case, the virgin can go wherever her soul wishes. Trying to ask something, the girl again becomes the one who is almost immediately interrupted mid-sentence. She can truly go wherever her heart desires, regardless of what others tell her. If the lady wants to leave, the door will always be open, only if the victim returns to Claude two years later. The girl continues to remain silent, so the king, drawing his conclusions, turns around and slowly heads out. Deciding to clarify the situation, the blonde quietly asks where the guards and guards are and why the castle is completely empty. It is not entirely within the power of a king of such status to behave properly. The man still looks angrily, as if he doesn't care what they say about him. He only reminds that he is quite powerful, and therefore does not need any kind of security that could protect him. He himself would have to protect even the guards. The girl nods, noting that it was a rather simple and short answer, 
which made sense, no matter what. The guy again tries to leave, while the beauty looks after him, thinking about how strange it was that the king spoke to the victim. Realizing that the chance is almost gone, the heroine abruptly stops the young man, who has almost left the room in which they were. Opportunities need to be used correctly, so the beauty is going to explore the surroundings of the castle and everything around in general in order to better study the territory in which she now lives. The answer is once again deathly silence. Lionel stopped, not intending to go anywhere, but did not say a word. The blonde couldn't help but admit that it scared her a little, so it felt like her heart would jump out of her chest very soon, despite the fact that there were problems with this. Instead of saying anything or finally leaving, the blonde comes even closer and then carefully leans right over the girl, who does not understand what is happening. He reaches for your neck, opening his mouth to lightly bite the soft skin, leaving his scent around. Of course, I didn't want to tolerate this, so the blonde sharply pushes the man away, trying to avoid at least some contact that might follow. If the king was against what the maiden suggested, he could have simply said that he did not like it, instead of acting strangely, once again. Still silent, the young man turns around and heads out again. Only almost at the door does the boy say that the victim can do whatever her soul wants. The girl was told about this when she first arrived here, but repeating it again was never a bad thing. The only condition under which nothing had to be done was that the girl did not, under any pretext, enter the forest without someone nearby, and even better, never poke her nose there at all. The blonde is left completely alone in the room, realizing only that she does not understand anything at all. The morning continued to drag on, as if endlessly, while Amelie finally decided to take an important step regarding the walk. Everything around was new due to the fact that the girl had, accordingly, never been to Castle Claude, about which nothing was said. She goes down the steps to the street, then the lady follows straight ahead, but notices the guards, of whom there were only two. They stood near the main gate, and there was no one further away. The blonde thought for a second about what would happen if they did try to stop her, but this was no longer so important, because as she passed through the arch, she realized that no one was paying attention. It seems that not everyone in this palace clearly understood the concept of sacrifice as such, since the king's next victim was easily allowed to be outside without even trying to restrain her. In fact, the girl had complete freedom to do whatever she wanted. First of all, the maiden decided, of course, to head to the city, which, as you know, was very close to the castle where Lionel lived. Going down the path, the beauty passes onto one of the main streets. For some reason, Amelie used to think that there would be people wandering around everywhere, turning into animals and living like those who do not know about civilization. But now, following the streets, she changed her mind. It seemed that everything around was not much different from the village near Aurelian. Still, there was a slight difference. The girl felt simply wonderful surrounded by people here, especially since she now gained a sense of security. She no longer cared how exactly everything happened, because life had completely changed. The smile itself appears on the face of the main character. She couldn't wait to finally explore everyone and everything around her, so now she proudly walked into the distance, looking around at the counters with different goodies and things. Another difference was that the beauty did not stand out too much among the people around, even if earlier in her city they almost always looked at her askance and shouted because of the beautiful silver hair that she had been growing for so long. The situation around seemed relatively calm, despite the fact that everything still seemed unusual. The stalls with flowers, of which there were simply a sea, looked the cutest and most beautiful compared to the others. Passing by, the girl managed to change her mind a hundred times. People around were whispering, being right behind the beauty, who calmly did not pay attention. They noticed the rarity of such white hair and how much she looked like the king. Still, Amelie was too young and naive, so she had to be disappointed very soon. People were unable to calm down, even if receiving compliments was much nicer. Most of those present simply talked about how beautiful the girl's hair was. Finally, the city bustle is over. In order to finally achieve at least some kind of peace, the beauty almost had to escape and get out into a clearing, which was located very close to the rest of the trees that led into the forest. The virgin was incredibly tired, so she bent over in half, looking somewhere at the ground. Perhaps she was not mistaken, and there was still some difference between humans and beastmen, because, judging by what was happening, it was becoming quite noticeable even to the naked eye. Wherever Amelie went, 
she still stood out terribly, no matter how hard she tried to hide her hair and everything else that belonged only to her. She looked around in horror, realizing that she had gone too far, so she was not sure whether she could find her way back. Turning in the other direction, the blonde looked somewhere into the distance. The path, lined with sand so that one could understand where to go, led somewhere deep into many trees, because of the crowns of which it was impossible to see absolutely nothing. The girl admitted to herself that she was even a little tired. The day seemed too long and terribly tiring. She wasn't prepared for how they treated her again, so she decided to break the ban and go to a place where she could get some rest from the others. Memories of Lionel immediately surfaced in her head, who made it clear that she could go anywhere except into the forest. He didn't explain what exactly was wrong or why she was prohibited from entering these areas, but the expression on his face seemed convincing. In fact, the heroine almost believed the words, so she was going to listen to them, but in the end, it was said by the one who was going to eat the victim in two years, especially since he shouldn't have cared. This was not relevant to the present case. My thoughts were interrupted by rustling sounds from the trees, as well as someone's breathing, which sounded more than terrifying. Just about to run away, the beauty still decides to turn her head, even if it was a fatal mistake. The eyes widen in horror. The sounds from the bushes, of course, were made by one of the wolves, which were of a completely different color. The dark fur gave away their origin, even if it was not so important, because having surrounded the lady, they began to move closer and closer to the body to attack. The next moment, without giving time to think or simply escape, the animals rush forward. They are merciless, so the maiden already in her thoughts managed to finish everything that was going to happen in the future. She understood that now two years would not pass. Instead of tearing poor Amelie to pieces, the animals carefully sniffed her face, and then her neck and whole body. After a few seconds, there was no one around anymore, because almost all of them turned around and left the place they were in. They headed back into the forest. The girl recalled the strange maneuver that Lionel made before leaving the throne room. He bent down and gently bit the lady's neck, as if showing that she belonged to him. I couldn't believe that the wolves didn't eat the heroine just because of what happened. It turns out that the king took care in advance of what could happen to the maiden, even by pure chance, so he decided to make his scent emanate from her. He didn't want to hurt the lady because he only wanted to protect her from others who might attack in the forest or outside. Throwing bad thoughts out of her head, the girl tried to forget about it. What she was thinking seemed completely absurd, despite the reality of what was happening. Most likely, the man marked the woman simply as his food, because he wanted to get her body in two years. The heroine thought too deeply, completely drowning in her thoughts, that she did not even notice the shadow and the beast, which quietly approached from behind, as if wanting to do something. Its color was completely different, so it was very different, because from the angle of the light, the door seemed blue with white splashes. There was no point in running, but attempts could not be wasted just like that, without even any chance. The girl rushes forward, hoping that she will be able to hide, but with one slight movement, the wolf grabs the girl by the collar of her clothes, lifting her into the air so that there is no way to fall to the ground. It turned out to be really dangerous in the forest, so the blonde managed to regret what happened and her decision a million times. She just wanted to return to the castle, because at this rate she could easily be eaten by wild animals, who were going to do this very soon. Bringing the girl to some dark cave, the animal throws her onto the cold ground. Sitting down on her knees and cowering in fear, the heroine slowly examines the place where she ended up by pure chance. She didn't know what the point was in saying anything, since no one would understand, but she still asked where she was. Only after a while did the blonde notice that behind the light-colored wolf, there were a lot of light eyes that looked out from the darkness. They glow, as if foreshadowing something bad, so it was not difficult for the heroine to understand that the end had come for her. There was no point in denying it anymore. Instead of feeling pain, the lady heard words that were imprinted on the subcortex of consciousness. Slowly opening her eyes, the beauty no longer sees a wolf, but a young man with light blonde hair, who asked the maiden if she was the victim. Noticing the surprise that was imprinted on the young face, the blonde asks the same question again, and then asks if the heroine escaped from the castle. He seems insightful because he immediately understands what is what and asks questions only as those that do not require any answer. Trying to understand or ask how the guy found out about such details, 
the girl does not find the right words, so the interlocutor himself finishes the sentence. It turned out that he, too, should have been sacrificed in the castle a long time ago. The girl asks what needs to be said, to which she is interrupted. The man asks to be addressed as you for complete comfort, and also notes the fact that he lived until he was eighteen in Aurelian, where he was born with that hair color. His name sounded like Theo. Asking the obvious question, the beauty asks why the young man is still alive if he too was supposed to be the one to be devoured by the king of beasts. The answer turned out to be simpler than ever, because the blonde ran away from the palace in the same way as Amelie did this year. The guy really turned out to be exactly the same as the main character. He's about to tell a story, so he sits down on the cold ground so he can be on the same level as the girl. They were both born with silver hair. As it turned out, the young man was treated poorly from birth simply because of his hair color. The family never accepted him, and there were no friends either, because children were told from childhood that they should not communicate with such garbage in order to save themselves. The boy always wanted a normal life, so he cried in the utility room after seeing other children who were exactly like them, but for some reason could afford to live a normal life. He did not understand why he was born someone who was obliged to die as soon as he turned 18. Other kids his age simply took their good life for granted, which is completely normal. They didn't value what they had, but they didn't miss even a single opportunity to mock the blonde, who didn't understand what he did to deserve it. When the young man turned 18, he had no choice, so he was taken to Claude Castle. The guards did not touch the body, but they also did not stand on ceremony, not allowing the guy to stop for a second or preventing him from trying to escape. They had a task that needed to be completed in the best possible way for praise. The young man did nothing to make it all end this way, but he understood perfectly well that he had no other choice. He had to pretend that everything was normal, as if they were not going to take him to certain death. No one in their right mind would want to put up with such manifestations. That is why the man decided to take the step that had been prepared in advance. When the guards had almost brought the hero to the gates of the palace castle, the man decided to finally act and not hesitate. He took a small knife from his back pocket, which was almost invisible due to its size. The next step was to try to escape. Untying his hands with the help of a gun, the guy jumped straight from the bridge, even if in theory it was very high there. Other people might have thought that he lost his life immediately, but that was completely wrong because of the layout. Next to the bridge, there was a net that easily absorbed the hero, who managed to jump down in time. This helped slow his decline, which could have ended badly. The man understood that salvation was very close, and this made him incredibly happy. The boy planned his escape when he was a child. From childhood, he knew that he would have to become the one who would be eaten by the king from Castle Claude. So he began work at the age of eight, nine in order to have time to do everything in his power to make sure everything ended. First, the young man finished with the work that related to the grid. He tried to do this as quickly as possible, and preferably without prying eyes, so that no one would bother him. After that, he hid a small knife that could ideally cut the ropes on his hands, and then everything went according to his perfectly worked out plan. From the moment of his escape, the hero began to live in the forest. He had no choice, because returning to Aurelian was of course not an option, since he would have been sent back or he would have continued to be bombarded with insults and work that was beyond the capabilities of even an, an adult. The girl did not understand how this happened. She quietly asks why they weren't looking for the guy, to which he looks away to the floor. They, of course, made attempts to catch him, but nothing worked until one day. One day, Theo was caught and brought to the castle, but apparently he was able to get out and return to the forest. The guards tracked down the young man and tried to drag him to the palace, but what happened to the blonde's body was incredible. He was able to turn into a beast and then simply ran back. From that very moment, it was possible to control the transformations that occurred almost on an ongoing basis. This was most likely impossible, but obviously it was not true, because the young man continued to transform masterfully. He understood that this was a strange gift, which, of course, had to be used while the opportunity presented itself. Since this happened, the man has become more evil and powerful, so these transformations came with a huge privilege. They stopped trying to catch the wolf, and the whole castle seemed to have forgotten about its existence as such. It was only to his advantage. Now, after several years, the guy has several new comrades. 
he did not consider himself lonely because even before, when he had to live in the city with the Aurelian castle, he had no one who would want to talk to him. Life is almost getting better. The heroine's gaze switches to the same place where the blonde is looking. Several dark-colored wolves are visible in the shadows, standing to the side. Judging by what has been said, none of them were real beastmen, because each of them could not transform, remaining only in the form in which they were at that moment. Apparently, Theo was the first and last to escape his fate. He escaped on the way to the castle, where he was supposed to end, and now lives quietly in a separate place, where he has been for many years. Everything seems to suit him. Still, the heroine realizes that she is incredibly sorry for the one who had such a terrible life, which he did not deserve at all. He wanted to get the best, but in the end, he was not in the best position. So the beauty asks if the guy needs any help that can be provided. Ignoring what the interlocutor asks, Theo says things that are obvious to him. Most likely, the lady also escaped from the castle in order to resist fate and stay alive. He persistently offers his help, because if they are together, then it will be much easier than alone. The girl doesn't know if she can trust the man she met just 20 minutes ago. He has many wolf friends who do not have human intelligence, so they can easily eat the heroine. All that remains is to reveal the truth, so the blonde quietly says that she has not yet become a victim because she's too young for this. There are still two years left until the official end of the girl comes. The second truth turned out to be even more striking because the beauty did not even intend to run away. She came here by pure chance and did not hope to meet Theo, planning to return back to the estate after the forest. Getting ready to say something else, the lady cannot find the right words. Theo is a rather special person because he hasn't interacted with normal people for a very long time, so he should be more careful. However, instead of running straight out of the cave, the girl asks if she can ask one question. In fact, the girl has an endless number of questions that can be considered almost forever. She could never be the one to shut up, but only one thing became clear to her. No matter how things went, there would still be a chance to escape and survive, no matter how much it was over. The man managed to carry out his plan. The hands themselves forcefully squeezed the hem of the dress. The girl is obviously very nervous about what is happening around her. She doesn't want to think about anything at all, however, if she can find out at least one small detail, she will be able to move forward and no longer stand at one dead point. The blonde sighs heavily, as he obviously did not intend to answer all the questions and was not in the mood. In any case, he can't treat the girl with disrespectful expressions of emotion, so he nods. He is ready to do whatever is asked of him or say whatever is told to him. The words are interrupted by howls that come from all sides. For some reason, the wolves have lost their ability to remain silent so they begin to howl loudly. Loud noises make his ears pop, forcing Theo to turn around sharply in order to check the situation or understand what happened during this time. Turning back to the girl, the guy tries to calm her down and then goes back to the animals. Obviously, they very quickly discovered what Theo had been looking for for a long time. He is about to leave, but before leaving the cave, the blonde turns around, saying that if the lady ever wants to meet again, she can always do it without any problems. Virgo nods her head, still not understanding what is happening. She tries to ask something, but she is interrupted by a man who asks that next time she just come to the forest, since he perfectly remembered her smell, which will now be familiar even from a thousand others. The only request is that the lady does not bring the king's scent on herself next time, by which she could easily be tracked along with the blonde. She may not have known what she did or didn't understand the complexity of the situation, but it's over now. Without saying anything else, the young man turns around and heads out of the cave. He almost left her, but never turned around to explain what was discussed earlier. It didn't seem to be in his best interest anymore, which seemed understandable. The wolves followed ahead in order to also escape. The girl turns to the side, trying to listen to what the animals that had disappeared from sight heard. Someone's steps are heard in the distance, which make it clear that they were discovered. Even if not an hour has passed since the lady broke the ban, and came into the forest without permission. I couldn't believe that Lionel himself came into the forest in order to pick up his future victim. He warned that you need to be careful with what you do, but in the end, everything turned out differently. Now, punishment most likely cannot be avoided. Instead of seeing Lionel, the lady noticed an animal that was slightly smaller than the king. Approaching closer, the beast decided not to waste time, so it immediately transformed into a man of average height who came closer. 
Virgo quietly asks who he is, trying her best not to stutter too much so as not to ruin everything. The guy looked more like a little boy because of his friendly expression and huge dark eyes that showed how much he wanted to make friends. His name is Noah, and he talks about how nice it is to meet Amelie. The king sent the guy because he was a member of His Majesty's Knightly Guard. Not understanding what we are talking about, the girl asks again, to which she receives another positive answer. The guy's lips spread into a kind smile, which assures that everything will be fine. It becomes clear that he is a pretty good person, but it is not clear what he forgot about the knights, especially from such a tyrant. The man is the one who is close to the prince and protects his honor and life. More questions arise, so the lady asks if it is normal for a knight of the guard to leave his king for such a long time, despite orders. A slight smile still remains imprinted on his face when, as the blonde says, he only says that he had no other choice. He did not intend to do this, however, despite the violation of the ban on entering the forest, the king forced Noah to leave his post and go in search of Amelie, who needed help. The man wanted to say something about the military assistance of Claude's castle and how exactly things were going with them, but he stopped mid-sentence, understanding exactly what this could lead to. He turned to the side, saying that in any case, it was definitely time for them to go back to where they came from. The blonde tried her luck in asking at least one more question, but after a while, it was unsuccessful. The guy again reincarnated as a wolf, who in the end wasn't even going to say anything. He looks away, as if ignoring anything the girl says. The beast runs closer to the heroine and bends down a little so that she can easily climb onto his back. They needed to return to the castle as quickly as possible, where most likely nothing good awaited them. The girl intently examines the animal's fur, realizing that it is slightly different. Theo's was blue, while Noah's was gray. No one could compare to Lionel, who had a snow-white coat. Each of them was soft in its own way. Finally climbing onto her back, the lady allows the animal to jump out of the cave and follow the trail. He starts running, and then gradually speeds up. The air hits your face even though it has no meaning or effect, other than hair flying in all directions. After some time, the couple found themselves directly in front of the palace, which, as usual, stood majestically right in front of the rest of the people. This was not the place where the main character would like to go, but there was still nowhere to go, so she simply sadly looked at the color of the fur of the animal that brought her here. Noah lowered the girl to the ground and then walked forward. He began to transform because none of them usually stayed in the form of wolves on the palace grounds. Seeing that the blonde is about to leave, the beauty grabs his hand, desperate because the answers may escape her. She asks about what the young man wanted to say then, but he shyly scratches the back of his head. Admitting his mistake, the guy says that these are palace affairs and he has no right to disclose them. The blonde still can't calm down. She tries to ask a lot of questions that are not even relevant. It remains to try to understand why she should not know this, even if, according to some, the lady is already in too good a position as for an ordinary victim. Bowing his head, the blonde promises that in two years all the secrets will be revealed, so there is no need to worry about it. There is not much time left to wait, even if for the girl it will be too long a wait that will drag on. Two years didn't sound like a good number to wait, because after that time things would only get worse. The beauty will become a full-fledged victim, who will be judged for what she did before, and then simply eaten without the right to appeal. Looking down at the ground, the lady refuses. She is aware of exactly what is being said, but does not see any meaning in it. There is no need to learn about the affairs of the palace just before death, because after that, what was said will no longer be needed. The girl is not going to ask any more unnecessary questions that stress the young man, so she turns around to leave the unfortunate place as quickly as possible. The blonde tries to detain the beauty, but everything is in vain. The words are spoken spontaneously, but it is true, because the man will now protect Amelie. Realizing that he had said too much, the boy sadly looks away. He wasn't going to say anything, but at the same time, he didn't really regret it. Now the girl will definitely stay at least a few more minutes to understand the whole situation that had to be resolved. Virgo is about to disappear from sight, but what she noticed in the distance prevents her from even thinking about doing just that. Lionel, who appeared as if out of nowhere, looks contemptuously at the victim. He quietly reminds you of his warning about not going into the forest without asking. The blonde bows her head as she steps forward. She wants to apologize, but her name is at the end of the sentence. 
beauty freezes, trying not to look too surprised by what she heard. This was the first time in my memory that the king called Amelie by name, because it had not been mentioned before. The hand is clenched into a fist so that the girl can release her aggression in calmness and not yell at someone else. She quietly asks why she was released back to Aurelian, if she could have escaped in the end anyway, because, as it turned out earlier, there were already applicants. For some reason, it was always allowed to go to the city forever and just take a walk. This was strange, so the girl decided to ask why it was forbidden to go into the forest then. These rules were starting to get pretty boring, despite the fact that only a short period of time had passed. Perhaps this is all because Theo lives in the forest. This is exactly what the blonde decided to ask, who realized that the reaction appeared immediately. Anger appeared for a second on the emotionless face, which usually did not express anything. Now it has become clear that this is true. What this is not the first person to say sounded as if they were giving the lady complete freedom of action, which in the end was not such, because it was something inferior. Hyde has said more than once that no one is going to keep the heroine locked up, but this was not true. Lionel, in turn, said that the beauty could always return home or back to the castle at any time, but this also turned out to be a simple lie. Many contradictions collided with each other, despite the problems, and the king's reaction to Theo's name hit the bottom almost completely. Most likely, the man knew that the guy managed to escape, and also knew that he was able to reincarnate into a wolf, who now cannot obey the king. He could resist the forces that were sent to capture him, and this upset Lionel, who did not want to let his victim go so easily. Obviously, now the blonde had a lot of contradictions in his head. He thought about what he should do to make it the right step. Perhaps it would be better to lock Emily or just catch Theo, who is almost elusive, like a ghost. Only a few days passed, which dragged on for a very long time. The girl did not understand what was happening and what exactly she should do, but she could not lose her hope. Having met a blonde man in the forest, she realized that she also had a chance to resist fate, just as the man himself did back in his time. After everything that happened, the beauty decided to think about what was happening around her. She had almost come to terms with what would happen very soon, but now she realized how greatly she was mistaken. It was necessary at all costs to find a way to survive and become happy in the future, which no one would spoil. After all, Theo had promised to provide at least some help that could be used. The girl could always go to his cave and have a serious conversation on this topic in order to get what she wanted. The idea of life in the forest was very different from the comfort that the beauty acquired in the castle. Theo ate mice, just like the other wolves, went hunting and slept on rocks. Such a life seemed terrible for someone who was used to living in an ordinary house, surrounded by people. Hands fall on the girl's head, who is incredibly nervous. She is well aware that she could not live such a life, because it was not for everyone. No other plan was given, but one could easily be found in order to obtain what was needed. Sighing heavily, the blonde leans back on the bed and then rolls over onto her stomach, burying herself in the pillow. She inhales the scent of a fresh bed, which was also incredibly soft despite the way it was set up. The castle treated its prisoners too well, even if it was just a trick. All the idle and thoughts are interrupted by the wind, which rages bottomlessly outside the windows. It can be heard from all directions, no matter how loud it is. It seems that someone has come, so, a little scared, the blonde jumps out the door, having previously looked up from what she was doing. Opening her chest of drawers, the beauty grabs a small knife that she managed to get her hands on. It was left just in case for self-defense, so the heroine decided that now would be the best time to use this thing. The door slowly swings open, and a head with snow-white hair pokes out into the corridor. The virgin quietly calls out to Ilya, who usually immediately appeared in her field of vision, but she simply disappears and does not respond. Something has happened in the castle, and you can smell it several miles away. This unknown frightens Amelie madly. The staircase, which is located at the end of the corridor, seems to beckon the girl to quickly go down. She runs up the steps and freezes at the very last one because she notices Lionel. He stands as if all his strength had completely left him while trying to restrain himself. There are several arrows in the body from which scarlet smudges can be seen, which need to be bandaged. Noticing who has arrived, the wolf grins angrily and then begins to growl nonstop, as if something had happened. This is the king, 
and he is clearly seriously injured. The blonde does not understand how this happened, so she tries to carefully examine the body, paying attention to small details. The man was wounded, even if he did not want to show his pain. Emily goes down the last steps, stepping carefully down, and stops next to the animal. The only answer is a loud growl that reverberates throughout the area. The heroine is racking her brains, but cannot understand what made the young man come to the castle in such a terrible state. For some reason, almost all her life, the lady thought that the King of Beasts was so powerful that no one could match his power, which was something unusual. It turned out that even such a powerful person like him could suffer defeats. No one was really going to explain what kind of battle it was, or how exactly it happened, but it immediately becomes clear that the wounds are dangerous to health. The animal walks a few steps and then falls on its side, making terrible sounds. The girl is in a fog that envelops her consciousness. She stands just a meter from Lionel and looks at the man, who closed his eyes in order to somehow reduce the amount of pain that was coming from all sides. If he dies, it will be a great opportunity for Emily because she will be able to escape. The virgin slowly takes out the knife, which all this time was hidden in her pocket, which was clutched in her left hand out of fear. I couldn't believe that the moment had come when the lady would finally have a chance to resist fate, which seemed unchangeable just up to this very moment. The plan collapsed right before our eyes because the beast began to slowly rise while still making strange sounds, similar to whining. The girl did not dare to do what was spinning in her head, but she understood that it could harm, so, throwing the weapon on the floor, she rushes forward to do something or provide help. As she walks, the beauty takes off her shawl. She was her favorite because she was the only one, but instead the lady decided on a similar act. The blood that was constantly flowing from all the wounds had to be stopped before everything only got worse, completely changing the whole meaning. Instead of standing still and obeying, the young man simply heads forward, completely unwilling to stop and talk about what is happening. He didn't want anyone to help him, so he simply walked away into the distance, leaving the blonde standing all covered in dirt, completely alone in a dark corridor in which it was cold. The girl does not understand what she is thinking about, while, according to the plan, she was supposed to get rid of the king. Thoughts are interrupted by a male voice, the owner of which turns out to be Noah, who almost immediately rushes towards the mistress, slightly holding onto the shoulder, which was dislocated. The blonde smiles, trying to make the girl not worry about Lionel, but on top of all this, the beauty also notices Noah's hand, which was also wounded, which only worsened the whole situation. There were no more excuses, so the man admitted that they were having problems collecting silver hair. Virgo thoughtfully repeats the name that was just said. She had never heard anything like this before, which is why she was so surprised. It seemed like there was another clue that they wanted to change, because Noah started waving his hands, assuring him that there was nothing to worry about. It turned out that in remote regions in the city, others were bullying people with silver hair, which ultimately led to bad consequences. Virgo throws up her hands. This makes sense because it is customary to sacrifice people, and although not as common, in Aurelian, they are considered to bring bad luck. Noah was informed that cases of bullying and murder had become more frequent recently, so he, of course, went in search of those who did this in order to take away innocent residents. The campaign did not end well, because the guard was simply attacked, leaving not a single chance. Now it seemed to the man that all this was just to lure them into a trap. The guards and knights from the Aurelian castle were planning to attack, but could not do this on enemy territory, so they decided to take a similar step for themselves in order to set up a massacre. The girl hesitantly looks away, noticing how the boy opposite is nervous because he told everything that he clearly shouldn't. The strange thing was that the wolves were going to save people, even if in the future they were to be eaten by the king himself, who was now pretending to be good. The lady quietly asks why they did not immediately decide to kill those who were supposed to meet their end after a while, to which she received complete silence. The young man's eyes ran all over the interior, around, just so as not to stop at the blonde opposite. No one said anything or thought it necessary for Emily to know the truth. Obviously, such a biased attitude was only because the young lady was just a victim who did not deserve to be given at least some kind of clue. Sighing heavily, the girl nods. She will not put pressure on someone just to get some answers that they don't want to give her, so she will humble herself. 
Virgo extends her hand because she notices the wounds on one of them on the interlocutor standing opposite. He jumps back almost instantly, taking his hand back so as not to be examined. Asking that the mistress not touch the scarlet stain, the young man notices the fact that her clothes have long been soiled, which will be difficult to wash. The girl looks sadly at the reaction she just received, but understands that she has no right to just give up. She asks to be allowed to at least help her, since there is no other benefit from her anyway, which is logical. The answer remains the same, invariably rude and cold. The blonde asks to be forgiven for the inconvenience that she caused while she was busy with everything that was happening in the castle. She wouldn't want anyone to hold a grudge, so she grabs the man's elbow and pulls him forward. Not having time to get his bearings, the hero tries to stop in order to ask along the way where he is being taken. It wasn't that important, because the young lady was going to bring Noah to her room. Hearing what was said, the blonde seemed to turn pale because of this, so he made another attempt to stop in order to run away. He quietly says that they should not do this. Noticing surprise and a new wave of disappointment on the young lady's face, the guy hurries to quickly correct himself, because he does not want to offend anyone. He talks about how they can replace the Lord's room with the maid's room, because it will be faster to get there, and you can also get many privileges. Pointing his free good hand towards the door, the blonde once again asks to follow him, but this time more insistently. There is everything needed there, which of course is not in Amelie's room, which was never ready to do anything to help the many wounded soldiers. The girl lowers her head. She agrees to do as she is asked, but still does not understand why the king suddenly showed kindness, as if it came out of nowhere. People with silver hair were victims who, of course, did not suspect that they would be saved by the one who was supposed to eat them. The morning continued, like the longest day that would never end. The prince, who had nothing to do, rests in his room, thinking about what he should do next. Straightening his hair, he thoughtfully looks out the window, waiting for the servants to arrive to help him get dressed. Behind the door, the same knock that the young man had been waiting for so long is finally heard. A man's voice asks if he can enter, and receiving a positive answer, opens the door, where several more servants pass. Each of them takes turns wishing the gentleman good morning and a good day. The guy gets up from his chair and goes to the bathroom to take a shower. The next step was that he ordered the servant to dress him in a new suit, since he did not want to go out anywhere twice in the same clothes. Carefully watching how the buttons are fastened, the man looks at the girl who is doing it. Trousers and a tailcoat follow, so dressing continues while one of the servants clears his throat and begins to talk about the latest news. The brunette reminds him that next month there will be an engagement ceremony, and then there will be an official introduction to Mistress Lenoa as if they had never done this before. Finally, that exciting and important moment will come when the whole world and even the wolves will learn about those secret meetings between the prince and the future princess in the forest. Until this moment, almost no one knew about it, so the wait was sweet torture. What happened between the couple could be called a beautiful secret love that no one knows anything about. This seemed like the right thing to do, because the brunette was sure that the female half of the population would like such a complicated and romantic story as this. In fact, there was no talk of secret love. In the book, it seemed that this happened completely by accident, so Lumiere encountered an aristocrat in the evening in the forest, but the truth was hidden by a thick layer of dust and lies. The father did everything so that people around him would believe, so the plan found itself in the best possible ways. Lenoa was also just a pawn in the hands of the king, who was trying to turn everything around in just such a way that everyone would believe. As a rule, the prince almost never communicated with other people who were present at social functions because he did not consider it necessary. The blonde was an aristocrat with an excellent reputation and not the worst character, she had some other characteristics that were hidden from prying eyes, but this choice was made by the boy's father, who knew exactly who needed to be chosen. All the secret meetings, as well as the dates the couple went on, were also part of a great plan that began to come true just in time. Everything was done perfectly, so that later people would groan, talking about the ideal love story of Lumiere and his chosen one of his heart. The man had been realizing for several years that something was fishy here, but only recently did he fully realize and accept his role. He is a toy in the hands of his father, who does whatever he wants, having the status of the highest person in the empire, which even the bravest would be afraid to object to. It was obvious that even the man's son could not go against his will, 
because otherwise it would not have ended as well as it should have. The king was the one who was really paid attention to and consulted with in order to then do exactly as he said. Everything went exactly as it was supposed to go. But on that very day in the forest, something inside Lumiere still trembled, as if life had ended in order to be divided into before and after. He could not forget what happened to him. It was then, at night, that the young man saw the victim in person for the first time. He knew about their existence like no one else, but he understood that he would never meet anyone like him in his palace. That night changed everything, so now the blonde remembers his hair and its beauty. In the sun, they would probably sparkle even brighter. Realizing that this is not worth thinking about, the man throws away unnecessary thoughts, but he does not manage to hold out longer than a few minutes. He turns to the servant, quietly asking him if anyone knows the name of the very victim from the forest who was captured. The brunette hesitates and then tells the truth as it is, because he really doesn't know who it was. You shouldn't bother your head, which already has so many problems associated with the state, with some name of an ordinary victim, who in the end disappeared anyway, which means she was most likely eaten. The man doesn't answer. He intently examines the interior of the room, starting to make a plan for what else he could ask so as not to fall under suspicion. I would like to know if the girl is still alive, or if everything is already over. There was still a chance, which gave hope. These are the affairs of the castle Claude, and not Aurelian, who fulfilled his duty by handing over the maiden into the hands of the king. However, everyone knew that there was an agreement according to which it was necessary to fulfill what was specified. According to the contract, the maiden must be eaten only after two years, since she is too young for the victim. The man assures that this is a normal phenomenon when you have to wait, so it becomes clear that the girl was unlikely to be killed. The agreement that was concluded between the two states is very ancient, so no one is recommended to violate the established rules. Perhaps the wolves found a loophole in the points. The conversation is nearing the end, because apparently the prince has exhausted his prepared questions that he had, but the servant remembers something. It turned out that recently, the girl who was caught was seen again in the city near the castle, and there was no logical explanation for this. One of the maids tucks her hair into a beautiful bow, trying to do it as neatly as possible, while the prince almost jumps from surprise. He does not quite understand how it happened that the maiden was able to leave and even return back to Aurelian, from which she came. The servant tries to calm Lumiere, who no longer seems to have any interest at all. The man does not know why this happened, but after this the servants noticed that the blonde took a walk and returned back to the castle Claude, from which she originally arrived, as if she was not a victim at all. The young man remembers what happened that night, trying to build his memories as clearly as possible. If that night he had taken the beauty's hand, perhaps everything would have turned out completely differently, and not as it is now. One could think about this forever, because nothing has changed. If the actions had been different then, then events would have changed, and the prince would no longer be obedient and ideal, one who constantly obeys everything that is said and carries out every undertaking with great pleasure, which would later fade away. Now the guy had no choice, but he could not stop thinking only about the fact that it would be possible to completely change what was happening. He wished for everything to change, as if nothing existed, so he bowed his head sadly to hide his face and his emotions. In reality, the thoughts and ideas were nothing more than just delusions. If the prince had acted properly, nothing good would have come of it, because the peace between people and animals would have been broken forever. The servant who is trying to reach his highness does not even suspect anything about his thoughts. Rising from the sofa, the young man goes to the window, asking the brunette if it is true that animals are so frightening that everyone is afraid of them, but no one gives him the specific answer he would like to receive. The castle is in decline, so if you believe what they say, victory will await Aurelian very soon with the help of their knights. The servant's words do not seem so true, because many people only talk about how powerful the werewolf king from Claude Castle is. He is much stronger than the other king known to the world, so Lumiere has doubts about capturing such a kingdom with just Aurelian's military forces. Those who think so are too naive, despite their behavior. It will be impossible to take such a person out of numbers, even if such an opportunity arises, because he will easily cope with every guard who dies. You should not rely only on luck, because it will not lead to anything good. The man gets up and is about to leave the estate, pushing away even the maid who is trying to throw a cape over his shoulders. 
He is tired of playing children's games, which only take up too much time. From now on, the young man is going to practice wielding a sword. At Castle Claude, the picture remains exactly the same as usual. The blonde is sitting at the dressing table in her room, taking care of Ilya, who is carefully combing her hair. She tried to remain silent, but breaks down, still asks if Lionel will be okay, because the man was too injured that day. There is no answer, only because the girl always remains the same silent, regardless of whether she is addressed or not. Deciding on one more question, Amelie asks if something like that often happens like that day. It seems that this is not so simple, considering that such wounds do not heal quickly. In response, only deathly silence is still heard, which envelops the room in which the young lady is located. Ilya does not want to tell what she is forbidden to say, so she remains silent, continuing to carry out the procedure that she began a few minutes ago. The girl tries to understand, but cannot, because it is difficult. Perhaps the woman is simply annoyed by the presence of her mistress, so she tries to finish as quickly as possible and go to her chambers. Finally, at least one word is heard from the side standing behind the maid. She will not be swayed by the presence of other people, and she is not going to talk about it, since they are simply trying to get her into a negative emotion in order to tell all the secrets of the castle. Emily falls silent. She is confused again, but this time things are even worse and more complicated. Beauty does not understand what position she holds in this estate, even if she tries hard to find out by continuing to put pressure on the rest of the people around. No one says anything, choosing to completely ignore whatever is asked. Virgo doesn't want to be the victim who gets killed, but obviously she is. Almost everyone is trying to pretend that this is true, while at the same time remaining respectful. The Virgin did not understand what would happen and what exactly awaited her in the future, just like the other victims. The choice was given, so it was necessary to comply with what was being done and definitely do everything correctly in order to last at least a little longer. Obviously, the castle followed strange rules, similar to the fact that only the king could kill the victims and not anyone else. Somehow this was connected with the contract that was concluded with Aurelian, but again, no one was going to say anything to the heroine. Ilya turned out to be one of those who kept her mouth shut. The weakest opponent was Noah, who, without knowing it, gave the others an idea of what would happen if he did spill the beans. All the thoughts in my head appeared only after the young man said something wrong. An almost absurd thought comes to mind that seems incredible. Perhaps Amelie is not the only one who doesn't know about what's happening in the castle. The option was considered that Elijah and Noah, who were only a cover for the king, also did not know about this. Sighing, the girl realizes her mistake. She wasn't sure about the maid, and instead of figuring it out, she just started putting pressure on her, trying to capture her and force her to tell all her secrets. The girl asks for forgiveness for all the inconvenience caused. Before saying what the heroine was thinking, she squeezes the hem of her dress, trying to concentrate on the words. She is sorry that Elijah was forced to do what she did not want and was assigned to a girl who would die anyway in two years. There was absolutely no point in this. The blonde interrupts the mistress, who does not fully understand what exactly is being said. This is not true, because in fact, it was not difficult for the beauty to care for such a pleasant person as Amelie. The only negative was recognized, because sometimes the heroine's whining was really annoying. The silence dragged on again, enveloping the room, but after a while, the maid interrupted it. A number of questions still remained in my head, just like the responsibilities that, of course, existed. Virgo asks if she should bring breakfast to the room, or if the girl should go downstairs herself. The blonde interrupts the maid before she can draw her conclusions. Nothing is needed, because the lady does not want to bother anyone, just because of her whims, which have absolutely no filter. The girl does not like to be obligated to anyone or feel strange. The maid already had a lot of work, which was added to by any wrong move of the victim who arrived for the next two years. This was completely unnecessary, so it was worth admitting. The girl objects, once again, trying to prove that everything she says is not true. They interrupt her, asking her not to tell lies, especially since the lady believed that she could be relied upon. You shouldn't say stupid things just to save the situation. The blonde tried to think relatively sensibly, but in the end, nothing really came of it. The girl would live in the castle for two more years, which meant that she was just an extra mouth that ate for nothing. Obviously, both Noah and the heroine could not like this, under any circumstances. 
Elijah, without expressing any emotion, again shakes his head in denial. She answered both for herself and for Noah, as if she knew in advance what he would say to what they were talking about. It didn't matter that much, but it was still important. Patience was slowly coming to an end, almost running out and exhausting itself. The girl, getting up from her seat, heads forward to quickly avoid the company of the maid, who is incredibly annoying. Virgo tries not to react, simply remaining calm. Still not a single emotion is shown on her face, so she just comes up from behind, quietly reminding her that there are still hair decorations that needed to be put on top after combing and all the other procedures that were carried out. The window showing the palace courtyard seemed more attractive than carrying on a conversation. The blonde sadly looks out the window, wondering what she can do. There was absolutely no meaning to the decorations, so this is what the maid is told in a veiled message to leave. It's worth stopping quickly so as not to go even deeper into the pit of regret. It couldn't help but irritate how much I wanted to regret what was said earlier. Ilya was the kind of character who was able to bring out emotions and make everything worse several times without noticing it, which didn't seem too wonderful. The blonde realized that there was no longer any point in hiding how things really were. Looking at the floor, the beauty says that there are absolutely no soldiers left in the castle, because over time everyone died in battles against the guards from the Aurelian castle, which used to attack with increased intentions and capture groups. The truth was that over time there was only one king left, and after him there were several more servants who did not carry such great importance. If the man had died a little earlier, the formation, as well as the city, would have long been captured by Aurelian and his fighters. Luck worked so everything ended better than expected. Now everything has changed. The previous ruler had an incredible gift, but with age he lost it a little. Not long ago, His Majesty Lionel was born, who was pure salvation for the city and for his servants, who could not help but rely on their ruler. After everything that happened, the man volunteered for a terrible battle in which he tried to protect his subordinates, but nothing came of it. There is only one king left in the castle, who is now alone trying to protect his kingdom as best as possible so that no one doubts his safety. The beauty tries to ask why Ilya suddenly decided to tell everything in small details, but she simply shrugs. Virgo asked if this happens often, so the answer to her question was honest. At the moment, Lionel had no help other than himself. If the maiden asks whether a young man often comes home wounded, then the answer will definitely be yes. He is almost always in this state, but it is usually easier to hide it from strangers because the wounds are not so bad that he has the strength to go further into the maid's quarters so that first aid can be given to him. It turned out that the truth that Amelie was so eager to know appeared very close, despite how many pressing problems it brought. Ilya fell silent, but after a few seconds she decided to ask about his highness. The answer seemed obvious, but she asks if Madame hates Lionel for who he is and what he constantly does. Such questions pull the ground out from under your feet, despite how hard the lady tries not to get nervous. Forcefully clenching her hands into fists and squeezing them together, the girl quietly wonders why she has asked such questions, which are completely irrelevant to the present matter. There is no answer. Ilya has turned on ignore mode again, which is incredibly annoying despite its use. The beauty lowers her head and looks at her feet, trying to catch her breath so as not to break down and scream. Raising her gaze, the lady looks straight into the eyes of her interlocutor. It's as if she's trying to drill into the consciousness in order to achieve consciousness. In the situation in which Amelie found herself, these questions are usually not asked because they seem quite ordinary and logical. The evil shine gives everything away. The hands are no longer clasped together because the beauty allows them to fall to the sides of the body. She gathers her courage and drawing more air into her lungs, screams at the top of her lungs about the fact that she hates both people and beastmen, precisely because of the way they treated her almost all this time. She didn't think she deserved something like that. Elijah stands quietly on the sidelines, not interrupting the wave of anger that is rushing out. After a few minutes, the beauty bows her head respectfully, and then says that it is time for her to go. She doesn't consider it necessary to say what kind of things await her, but it is not clear from her that fear has managed to take over her body. The speed of action does not allow the heroine to say even a word. Already opening her mouth to apologize, the beauty realizes that the door slammed shut with force, and the maid was on the other side of the door. You shouldn't behave like that, 
and the girl was well aware of this, but she didn't want everything to become worse than it was. Sitting on an armchair near the bedside table, the blonde examines her shoes, which are moving on the parquet floor. Strange feelings were still able to take over the mind, because the lady admitted to herself that she regretted what she said and the way she reacted to the usual question asked in her direction. There was something to regret, given the situation in which the victim found himself. She did not have a home because she was not accepted there under any circumstances. She knew it wasn't something to worry about, but it also made a difference. The reception at the castle turned out to be warmer than from the family, but even in this situation, the maiden was going to be killed sooner or later. The blonde could not stand the strange anticipation, which could not compare with the expectation of good news that she wanted to know. Knowing the approximate time of your death seems like another level of torture that you can't wait to give up so as not to put your brain in danger. Virgo lowers her head down, pressing the pillow closer to her body. She doesn't know what to do in such a situation, because no one has ever treated her with such kindness, which seemed to enchant her, making her forget about everything else. I didn't want to admit it, but I still had to, because the lady was simply afraid of a good attitude towards her person when she knew how it would all end in the end. It was very difficult and painful to endure this, because sometimes I wanted to run away and hide somewhere completely alone. The fear of being deceived and hurt is the worst thing imaginable. At first, it didn't seem like something that needed attention, but over time the beauty realized what a hole she had fallen into, where she had driven herself. Every time a lady was treated a little more than kindly, she wondered if it was a scam or something else, because victims weren't supposed to receive even an ounce of love that they didn't deserve. Thinking about the future was even more painful than other manifestations. If you continue to be so paranoid, in two years, things will end even more tragically, which, again, is incredibly frightening, considering what is happening from the very beginning. Being eaten is not an easy fate. If you reject everything that comes your way, then two years will be incredibly long and painful. This arrangement is not at all liked by the one who sits on the sofa with her head buried in her hand. The strength was leaving the body because it was being eaten up from the inside by a feeling of guilt and a lot of questions. Another method comes to mind that seemed to work in order to end everything and get what you need. Throwing into the river was not an option because it could end badly. In her past life, the original Amelie did just that, because she saw no other point in doing anything else when a simple solution was always at hand. Drowning didn't work this time. The gaze again dropped somewhere down. The pillow seemed like a best friend who would support her, because the blonde even admitted that she had absolutely no friends who could support her. Memories come into your head, as if out of nowhere, and make your insides clench like an accordion. In a past life, the heroine chose the same simple exit, which seemed to be the only choice provided, even if it was completely different from what was thought. In both cases, everything was not as good as we would like, which made us nervous, but horror is shown on the face when the realization of things comes to mind. This was not the first time that the beauty had thrown herself at will, so it seemed that she was doomed to live the same thing again and again. There is no more strength to think about what will happen and what was. The lady quickly jumps up from her chair to leave the room, which suddenly began to try to squeeze the body with its walls, which crawled towards each other with increased speed. His hands are shaking, and his vision is blurry, making it impossible to focus on him. The virgin is about to leave the room, however, when she gets up, she touches a beautiful vase with a huge bouquet of different flowers, which quickly fly onto the parquet floor to break. The door opens sharply, almost at the same second. Elijah was the person who showed up on the doorstep again. For the first time, the blonde showed at least one emotion, and it was pure anxiety that did not allow her to relax, even in this situation. She asks what happened. The lady who is about to leave is sitting on the ground with her hands on the floor. Nearby there are fragments and flowers that float in a puddle of water. The girl breathes heavily, trying not to give herself any slack and not cry once again right in front of the others. The maid carefully sits down next to the mistress and asks if she was hurt, to which she receives a package of aggression. The lady throws away her friend's hand and jumps up from her seat, rushing to the door, completely ignoring the screams that are coming from the room. Nothing else matters, because the strength is already exhausted. The blonde rushes down the corridor to quickly get into the fresh air. She only thinks about what an unfair fate the main character suffered, who did not deserve it. The girl had long ago understood, 
and come to terms with the fact that no one in this world was able to understand her, because her heart was captured by sadness. Neither people nor animals could do anything about it, even if they tried, as Elijah did not so long ago. The virgin herself did not notice how she ran to the place where she had already been. The forest surrounded with its silence and shadow falling from the foliage and rich crowns of trees. The air was completely knocked out of her lungs, so the girl stopped to catch her breath a little before continuing on her way. There was no clear plan in her head, but the blonde understood that she needed to at least try to change her fate. She sighs, and taking more air into her lungs, begins to scream Theo's name. If a man was able to escape, thereby changing his fate, then she will succeed too, especially with the help of other people. A few minutes later, her strength ran out, so Amelie decides to take another break. She falls to the ground, resting her hands on the ground and trying to breathe without harming her lungs, because the pain began to consume her body. Some rustling sounds are heard ahead, and then someone steps. It seems to be an animal, but knowing about Theo's strength, the maiden was not too afraid. Raising her head, the blonde notices something completely different from who she was hoping to see right in front of her. A strange panther, similar to a bear because of its strong paws, found itself a meter away from the weakened body of a woman who did not even have the strength to scream in horror and awareness of the inevitable. The animal obviously wasn't going to wait for something unknown, so it rushes forward. As if in slow motion, the movements become clear, giving time to be horrified, because the teeth that are visible from the mouth foreshadow a big disaster that certainly cannot be avoided. The beauty closes her eyes and covers her face with her hands. She could have tried to do something, but the lack of strength and desire did not allow her to do anything at all. Admitting defeat, the maiden understands that no matter how happy she is, this time the final end has come. A stone flies from the side, which hits the face of the animal with force, which jumps away. The blonde, who already thought that she had died, realizes that nothing is over. So opening her eyes, she looks around in fear, noticing the fact that someone has crushed the panther. Instead of defeat, the beast only became even more angry. Turning to the side to look behind her, the girl notices Ilya, who has arrived to help. The girl seems fragile and small, but instead of running away, she takes a fighting stance and picks up another heavy stone from the ground with which she could try to fight back. A few seconds later, the thing was thrown forward. In a few moments, the beauty managed to be next to the mistress and, at the speed of light, take out a small folding knife from her pocket. The fear was still noticeable because it was revealed by the hands, which were shaking easily, trying to hold the weapon pointed forward. Virgo does not understand why the maid, after everything she said and after the way she behaved, still came to protect. Risking your life is not something that is done just like that, so there was some hidden meaning that had to be found out as quickly as possible. The panther slowly steps forward, intending to make everyone regret what happened. The blonde, not realizing the whole situation, once again quietly asks what the maid is doing here, who, by chance, arrived just in time to save the girl's life. The answer does not come immediately, because the Virgo is focused on the danger that is approaching. Collecting her thoughts, the lady says that she was simply worried about Amelie, who ran away in the direction of the forest, which may not be so safe. This was precisely the reason why the beauty followed the mistress. For the heroine, it is obvious that this was still not considered the most important argument, so she asks her question, but in a different sentence, one more time. This is annoying, but the response is again silence. The danger is getting closer, so this reaction is logical. The woman followed Amelie only in order not to let her out of her sight and to know exactly where the victim was. But then the best solution would have been to simply lock the girl in the castle without the right for her to go out anywhere and get lost or run away. Elijah, losing self-control, almost starts screaming. During all this time, the new acquaintance was quite tired of her with her outbursts when she talked about how bad she felt and how terrible everything was. She had no intention of keeping anyone under surveillance because there was no order, especially since the real reason had already been spoken a little earlier. The girl quietly asks if this is true. In her world, everything that was said was the same, without any exceptions, therefore, no matter how much I wanted to change something, it was not possible. The blonde finally decides to finish off the maid, asking a million more questions. The most current one becomes the last one. She wants to know what sacrifices mean to the beastman, 
Obviously, such individuals are nothing more than just mindless fodder that takes 18 years to prepare. The answer does not have time to fly out of the mouth of the acquaintance standing next to her, because the panther gets tired of beating around the bush and quickly approaches, forcing Elijah in horror to extend the small knife even further for complete protection, which was never provided. Everything was lost, so it became clear that both of them could no longer be saved. The solution was obvious. The heroine sitting on the ground begs the maid to leave her here and run away quickly, because she has no right to protect the food. If you have the courage to continue in the same spirit, there will be no point, because the lady herself will become food, only for the animal, which, with shining eyes, slowly approaches closer, growling with every step. Ilya turned out to be someone who was extremely serious and at the same time friendly, despite the way things were in general. She turned out to be a noble person who found her own way out in any situation. It didn't matter whether Amelie was a victim or not, because the beauty's act had nothing to do with this, absolutely nothing. The blonde blinks his eyes in surprise. She doesn't believe what was said, because this was the first person in her life who thought exactly this way and not otherwise. This was something new and unknown, which made me wonder even more than if everything was in order. Virgo steps back but realizes that there is still no salvation in sight. She cannot understand how it happened that, despite the unequal forces, the maid was going to confront such an opponent with just a small knife, which was the size of several fingers, against a huge animal. Memories of what was said not so long ago surfaced in my head, about how the lady hates both people and beast people, who are not different from each other in any way. She screamed that she hated both races, and now one of them came to the aid of the one who spoke so horribly. Despite the fact that the lady had every right to consider the girl a burden, she came anyway. There is only one question spinning in my head. Why? There are no explanations, because this act, without saving anyone, will leave some kind of memory that will be deposited in the mind forever. Tears themselves accumulate in the corners of the eyes, flowing down in even paths down the cheeks. The girl can no longer withstand such pressure, and the fact that after everything that happened, she continues to sit on the ground and do absolutely nothing, hiding behind the maid's back. The lady stands up from the ground, decisively shaking off her dress and taking the weapon from the maid's hands. Defense became what Amelie was going to do, despite the way things were in general. She pushes her friend away with a slight movement, so as not to hurt her too much, but to show that she should quickly leave. It would be much easier if I didn't have to waste energy on stupid explanations. The girl turns around, already starting to scream, which sounds more like an unheard plea. The blonde asks the maid to run away quickly, even though she will be left all alone next to the panther. Elijah, of course, is not going to give up that easily, because it doesn't matter. Virgo remains just as persistent. She would never want anyone to get hurt or die because of her. This happened completely by accident, but did not mean that the girl should have stayed in the forest, because if she died, Amelie would have nightmares that haunted her consciousness every night. Obediently stepping aside, Ilya tries to stay close so as not to go anywhere, but a beast walks around her, which is still aimed at her rival, who is standing with a knife in a fighting position. Swiftly rushing forward, the animal once again shows how impatient it is, so it throws its paw and claws forward. This is not the first time the panther has attacked someone in the forest, so he knows exactly what he should do and exactly how to make each move. He jumps and throws the girl to the ground, pressing her hands on top with his paws so that it is impossible to move. The palms relax and the knife falls out of the fingers, flying somewhere to the side. Trying to survive seems futile, but you still shouldn't miss this opportunity. Only now did the lady really understand how much she values her life. Therefore, feeling for a stick somewhere near her, the blonde grabs it and putting her hands forward, inserts it into the animal's mouth to slow it down a little. All this time, the beauty did nothing but lament the fact that she would eventually be killed. In fact, a person who has already once known what such death is does not have the right to feel sorry for himself, because he must appreciate what he has, not at that very moment. It is important to realize your values in life and time. There is absolutely no time to look back at Elijah for the last time, even if I really want to. Indeed, the road ended very quickly and is about to end, even if there was no need to behave this way before. After all, when a person involves people who are trying to protect him, he risks himself and their lives too. Thoughts that are confused in the head, 
do not have time to complete their course. The branch, which was in the panther's teeth all this time, breaks and scatters into two different parts to the sides. The animal's eyes glow with a predatory, dangerous light that foreshadows only the worst. The beast is not going to eat the girl almost immediately, because first he obviously wants to enjoy the moment. The mouth slowly opens, while the animal growls terribly, leaning towards the very face of the heroine, who has closed her eyes in fear, anticipating the pain that will soon engulf her body. A sound behind the panther interrupts what was about to happen because the footsteps seem too loud. Turning around with the others, the beauty, although not immediately, notices a wolf with snow-white fur, who sparkles with unkind eyes in the direction of what is happening. The next thing Lionel does is capture the animal. He is not going to stand on ceremony with the one who attacked his captive, so he grabs the neck, trying to drag the beast away from the girls, who still remain in shock, as if they have no words to say. The duel began, and this was the beginning of the end, which foreshadowed trouble. The wolf turned out to be more than virtuoso in battle, so it was at that moment that Amelie realized how only the king was capable of defending his state alone. The force was great, so the panther was defeated and ran away screaming into the forest. Lionel slowly transforms back into his human form. His face, as usual, expresses anger, which is almost not hidden. However, he is obviously not delighted with everything that just happened, especially in his presence. He didn't have any trouble dealing with the monster, but the fact itself was annoying. The maid was the first to rush to meet the master. He is her master, so there is no point in trying to disobey. The girl falls to her knees, tearfully asking for forgiveness for causing so much inconvenience because she disobeyed and followed her mistress into the forest. Instead of venting his anger, the young man placed his hand on the top of the beauty's head, assuring her that everything was fine, so there was no need to worry. He wasn't the type of person to take his anger out on someone else, especially if they were defenseless servants who did something by mistake. Looking down at the lady, the guy says that it's time for them to go back to the palace before it gets completely dark outside. He looks relaxed, but the naked eye can see how important it is for him to save face. The man takes a few steps back and transforms into a wolf, which sits on the ground, waiting for the couple to finally gather their strength and move towards the house. The blonde sits on the ground, looking thoughtfully to the side. She is trying to digest everything that was heard and seen. There was a complete mess in my head that was impossible to calm down, so my eyes increased in size, almost several times. The man lost all patience, because Amelie did not extend her hand towards the maid who was trying to lift her. Approaching closer, the animal grabs the collar of the dress and throws the girl onto its back, sitting behind it so that when it picks up speed, it does not accidentally fall. A few seconds later, the animal is already rushing forward along the path that leads away from the forest, in which it is too cold and scary. The girls grab the wool to avoid ending up on the ground and getting a few more unnecessary injuries. The girl carefully examines the guy's body, noticing several scratches left by the panther. They would be more noticeable on a person's body, but she could not believe that the young man had come to the aid of someone who had done so much bad just to save him. The beast was in too much pain. Upon arrival at the palace, they were met at one of the entrances by Hyde, who carefully extended his hands to help the girls get off the man's back. Later, he was going to examine his highness for injury and other problems that could have happened completely by accident. The virgin lowers herself behind the cold tiles, looking around to find the maid who has already disappeared somewhere or was still in the palace. The young man transformed back into a human and, straightening his clothes, walked next to the lady, who attempted to apologize, but was interrupted. The man quietly asks about the presence of wounds, to which he receives an easy answer that they are not serious at all and therefore are not worth attention. Coming closer, for the second time, he just as unexpectedly bends down to bite his neck and understand what happened. Running his nose along, the guy obviously chuckled. He assumed that what happened would happen, but he was not exactly sure of it. Only now, receiving confirmation, it became clear that the king's scent, which he left last time to protect his body from other animals, had disappeared. The girl did not immediately understand what was being said, but after a few seconds, she remembered that small incident that happened quite recently. The man did this only for additional protection. The guy also had to take care of his other subordinates, so of course he asked about how Ilya was feeling, but she ended up in the hands of Hyde, who would take care of her. It wasn't even worth worrying about anymore, 
so the guy grabs the blonde's hand and drags her forward with him. The girl tries to ask what is happening, but in response, she receives absolutely no words that could explain anything. Taking the lady into the room, the guy throws her onto a chair in which the body will be examined to detect wounds or bruises that might have appeared overnight. Instead of getting down to business, the guy turns around and leaves the room, saying that he will be back soon. Virgo is obliged not to go anywhere and just sit still, waiting for someone to come to her soon. Not even a few minutes had passed before the young man returned, as promised, but already with a suitcase, which apparently contained everything needed for cases of injuries and more. The first thing that came out of the box were bandages, which had to be unwound before attaching them anywhere. Realizing what is about to happen, the beauty puts her hand forward, trying to object, saying that she can handle it just fine on her own. But instead, in the end, she simply extends her hand so that Lionel begins his procedure. Carefully observing every movement on the part of the man, the girl notices the fact that it is quite strange to see a young man doing such a thing. She meant this in a good way, but taking everything worse than it is, the guy asks not to complain so as not to worsen the situation. Virgo refuses because she doesn't complain. She would never return it, but it is strange that the king himself provides medical care, especially when it comes to someone like a girl who is just a victim. The man freezes and even looks up from what he's doing. He raises his head up, looking into the eyes of the girl, who seems to be completely unfazed. She sits as if nothing had happened and looks at her interlocutor when he asks what is strange about providing first aid. Perhaps it really is a matter of not having enough hands. There weren't many servants in the castle, and after Ilya's story, in which he told a lot, thereby shedding light on the situation around him, the king himself was forced to serve his own subordinates, because otherwise he would have been left completely alone. Inspecting the work, the beauty carefully adjusts the bandages, which have managed to slide a little to the side. Virgo looks at the blonde, and then thanks him for doing something that will help him feel better faster, even if the psychological trauma does not go away so easily. The man nods in response, and then picks up the first aid kit and heads towards the exit, but is stopped. The blonde takes the thing away, trying to start a conversation about the wounds that she saw earlier on the wolf's neck and back when they were driving back from the forest. They could not be missed, because otherwise there could be consequences. Intending to press for pity or try to force the guy to abandon the idea, the girl hands the little thing back. If she is not trustworthy, then of course she will not insist on anything. It would be strange if the king agreed to accept help from a captive who was lower in status than him. Still deciding not to give up, the girl resolutely points her finger at her hand, asking to see the wound. No matter how uncomfortable it was to receive help, it still had to be done before to avoid infection and other not-so-great things. No longer finding the strength to listen to reproaches and everything else, the man silently rolls up his sleeve, extending his hand forward to the table. The heroine carefully examines the wound, trying to understand where exactly to start in order to achieve the best result. It's strange that everything that happened turned out this way. I couldn't believe that just recently, the beauty's life was different from what she was doing now. She wouldn't have been able to think of something like this before. The guy interrupts the flow of thoughts, which seems to never end, saying that the girl does not do everything carefully. By clicking her tongue, the lady reminds you that she is just trying, even if it is not the best she can do. While adjusting the bandage, the promise is made that from now on, all movements will be much more gentle and careful if the king himself so wishes. The beauty could not explain what exactly she was doing, but she was well aware that she was not afraid of the man standing right in front of her. Fear was completely absent, dulled. The Virgo sits directly in front of the man who is going to end her life in the future, as if nothing had happened. It seems as if the universe has acquired new colors, which are now significantly different. The guy is silent, because he is satisfied with everything and is just waiting to leave quickly. The room was boring because it had become a prison, in which even the walls put pressure on the consciousness, so the heroine decided to go to see the main possessions of the king. She didn't know what exactly she wanted to see, but it didn't give her peace, so the maiden slowly climbs the steps to one of the towers. Almost having reached the site, the lady freezes because she realizes that she is not alone. Behind the wall, literally a few meters away, are Noah and Lionel, who are talking in slightly elevated tones. The boy seems alarmed by the situation that has developed, because the gentleman has a lot of wounds and asks for forgiveness. 
The blonde nods his head to try to convince his subject, who already seems ready to fall into hysterics. The expedition took place at the will and order of the king, so there is nothing wrong with this, since the young man was aware of what he was doing, just like every step he took. The boy, who cannot be calmed down, continues to try to object, to which he is once again simply interrupted. Noah could have come earlier, but did not, but it is not his fault, because the hero already does more than enough to save the kingdom and his king. What happened could be considered a lack of due respect, which really disappeared as soon as the blonde did not come in time to somehow try to help. His eyes sadly dropped to the floor, indicating that he is sad even to look at the man opposite. The girl standing behind the column managed to quickly build a logical chain. Yesterday, for some reason, Noah was absent from the castle, so Lionel had to personally come to the forest in order to save Amelie and Ilya, who also ended up there. He didn't want to do this, but he was literally forced by circumstances and the way they turned out. The king is about to leave to attend to his other affairs. It's obvious that he doesn't see the point in staying and trying to do anything because he's made his opinion known beforehand. The servant bows his head in respect and then turns to ask Amelie if she likes peeking so much that she decided to do it. The knight's gaze and vigilance are a little astonishing, but the beauty does not dare to try to object because this can only ruin all communication. She hesitates a little on the spot, trying to say something in her own defense, because in the end the couple was noticed completely by accident, even if the heroine just decided to take a walk. The blonde no longer tries to justify herself, because she realizes that she needs to apologize as quickly as possible. Sadly lowering her head down, the beauty asks for forgiveness because she does not want to feel so much guilt. No one would want to bring so much trouble to those people who always take care of a person, no matter what. Noah's reaction once again amazed the heroine. The boy breaks into a good-natured smile, assuring that if everything is fine with the girl, then everything is fine with him too. Emotions seem sincere, so there is no opportunity to rummage through the mind and find out the truth. The girl nods in agreement, even though her face shows the confusion that seems to be eating her up from the inside, because she behaves this way. I don't want to think about the future, but thoughts about what will happen in two years again make themselves felt, continuing to persistently creep into my head in order to ruin everything and take away a piece of peace. The attitude of the people in this castle again and again turns out to be extremely contradictory. Virgo is just a victim who will eventually simply disappear, but in the end, for some reason, she is treated better than ever in her native Aurelian. This cannot but arouse suspicion, which is logical. It is clear that the servants are trying their best to hide the truth from how everything is happening, but the girl does not understand how Noah can smile so sincerely about all this, as if he really cares about his mistress. It was not possible to solve the riddle, even if I really wanted to. The other side of the coin still existed, no matter what. There are too many thoughts, so the young lady tries to calm down before it gets too bad. No one around them seems interested, so they behave this way, which means that if you continue to worry, you will only end up making yourself look bad. The girl raises her head and smiles to show that she also doesn't care about what is happening. That's why she behaves this way. For some reason, next to Noah, the blonde forgets about everything around her, including the fact that she is a victim who is going to be killed very soon. Not wanting to give up, the lady gives the boy a wide berth, looking into his eyes to appear as friendly as possible. Beauty asks if Noah goes on expeditions completely alone. For some reason, it used to seem that it was worth sending at least several people on such trips to check. But everything is changing. The young man does not try to deny the obvious, so without hesitation, he nods his head in confirmation. There is too much going on in the kingdom to just close yourself off and sit in the castle as if in a fortress, so it's worth trying to go out and save the others. Of course, there are not enough workers, since Claude Castle is known to be empty. The girl nods, and then moves further to the edge of the tower. The high partition does not allow you to calmly look down, so you can only look forward to understand what is there. This view makes you forget about all the horrors that are happening around, at least for a minute. Lady asks if Noah is counted on for strength, even though she thinks the answer is obvious. Although the boy seems small, he has quite a lot of strength that has not yet been exhausted. The answer is amazing, because the young man turned out to be modest, believing that he could never compare with Lionel, who was much more, 
The conversation is abruptly interrupted because the man suddenly turns his gaze somewhere to the side. His behavior does not bode well, so the beauty turns her gaze directly behind him into the distance, trying to understand what is there. The guy's eyes anxiously run from side to side, trying to anticipate what will happen. The man almost instantly grabs his bow, which he tunes and then draws forward. Virgo tries to get through to the guy by saying his name, but does not receive any reaction, since being preoccupied with the situation completely eliminates everyone else. The blonde does not lower his bow and continues to spin from side to side. He still seems worried, so he tries to explore the area, which is somewhere below the castle. He felt a strange gaze on him, so he couldn't just let it get away with it as if everything was completely fine. Virgo carefully watches every movement. She didn't want to admit it, but she easily took it back, because even if the guy didn't look cool, he was still cool by continuing to act like that. The young man lowers his weapon, sighing heavily. The situation has improved, because the person who was below has apparently disappeared somewhere, so the guy moves back. Nothing bad happened, however, pointing to the stairs. The hero asks, if possible, not to be near the fortress wall, which could be attacked. The blonde nods in agreement, looking away somewhere to the side. She wondered what she should do next, but it was obvious that she was interrupted once again, asking questions about safety. Noah quietly apologizes because he realized too late that he scared the girl with his behavior. The heroine shakes her head negatively. She was not frightened by what had happened, even if it seemed as if the fragile girl should even cry. Quietly talking about how cool the man looked when he tried to target the enemy, the girl looks into the eyes again to enhance the effect of her future request. The lady looks quite confident in her decision, so she says that she would also like to learn how to handle the weapon she would choose. I didn't want to remain defenseless in case of an attack, so this option seemed quite feasible in order to protect my body. The blonde freezes. From his face, it becomes clear that the young man expected to hear anything, of course, except for what he was told in the end. He wanted to ask in more detail, but immediately understood that the refusal would be bitter. Such a surge of energy remained a mystery because it happened not only because of the beautiful pose of the young man with a bow in his hands. The beauty tries to justify herself, since obviously this makes sense. She thought that it would be nice to know how to handle weapons in order to protect herself from misfortunes that could appear out of nowhere. She didn't want anything done to her, and she couldn't even resist. The girl, of course, did not fully explain the motives that prompted her to such thoughts. Everything she said was a little one-sided because of the way it changed, which couldn't help but look strange. Obviously, the lady was afraid to meet the panther in the forest again and not experience the same luck next time as this time. Noah still bats his eyes innocently, trying to object to something, or at least think about what could be said. The protection that relates to the maiden is carried out by the knight, so there is no need to even doubt him. However, he still cannot completely change the beauty's opinion just one second after everything happened. The man was not going to interfere with the urge to learn, so he turns back, as if trying to find something. If a lady really wants to try and become a professional, then all the doors with opportunities will certainly be open right in front of her, which can't help but rejoice. The guy finds the very thing he was trying to track down and pulls out from behind his back a case with a sword, which is carefully wrapped in dark material. First, it's worth trying to at least hold a real weapon, in order to at least understand what true strength is. Not everyone is able to even handle a sword at the very beginning of their journey. The girl blinks her eyes in surprise, but still accepts the sword from the hands of the young man, who persistently holds it out. The thing seems heavy, so the lady once again thinks about what she will do in the future. What's scary is not even what you'll have to study, but how things will turn out if you don't. The mouth of a panther flashes before your eyes, which almost ate the heroine. The girl takes out the thing and then tries to swing it in different directions, trying not to hit Noah, who is standing a few steps away from her. After a few minutes, the strength leaves the body, so the beauty sadly lowers the sword down, asking for forgiveness, because obviously the strength was overestimated, because Amelie will not be able to wield the weapon even after many trainings. This was visible almost immediately. The blonde takes his sword back and then puts it in his bosom. He looks thoughtfully into the distance, as if trying to come up with some kind of workaround that seems not to be found. Grunting, the guy again confirms that owning such a weapon is not easy, so you shouldn't be so upset that not everything works out. An idea comes to mind on its own, 
even if it was not what I would like to do. The bow is also not the worst weapon to use. The thing is much easier to use, even if you still need to learn a lot before you start hitting your targets or your enemies on the battlefield when the battle begins. Such training is even suitable for combating boredom, which is absolutely true. The girl looks with interest at what the guy is doing, who again draws the bow in order to be accepted. Noah didn't have much time, but he immediately promised that they would take on training the new recruit if the lady decided to take this important step. Grabbing the little thing, the beauty looks into the eyes, which glow with happiness. She didn't think that she would have to study not in splendid isolation, so the smile itself spreads across her face, as if there was a holiday that ended on a good note. Since the heroine asks for this, it means, of course, that her dreams will come true. Such words make the beauty feel embarrassed and become covered with red paint, which spreads across her cheeks. She is not used to such good treatment, much less to the smiles that are given to her almost on a constant basis while she is in a castle in which she is considered a prisoner with free access to the city. The beauty got to work almost immediately in order to have time to do everything in the best possible way. The blonde tried her best to make her studies progress faster. Noah seemed less interested, but he always tried to make the girl feel comfortable and able to do what she wanted. The beauty always preferred to play by the rules, but sometimes she jokingly said that if she became stronger and defeated Lionel, she should not regret it, because the servant was the one who trained her. There was always a sarcastic smile on his face that made itself felt. After something like this, the young man almost always burst into laughter, which echoed throughout the area. He didn't believe that this was possible, so he preferred to talk about everything in that way. If the girl were not joking, one would think that she was too arrogant. Usually, after jokes, the beauty looked at Noah, and then a minute later, she also burst into laughter, which could not be stopped under any pretext. The blonde was simply happy because she was in a pleasant company in which she was valued and was not going to be humiliated under any pretext. Virgo couldn't help but think about how much her life had changed. She didn't remember the last time she laughed so hard, considering that this time it was real, something sincere and true. The smile from realizing the situation became even more attractive. All this must definitely come to an end over time. This becomes logical only because the maiden is a victim who is in a castle in which she will be eaten in two years. This bothered my mind a little, but not enough to make me constantly nervous. Enjoying moments that are given for nothing would be wrong on the part of a girl who had no intention of missing out on anything. She understood perfectly well that she would never again receive so many positive emotions that had surrounded her all the last days. The beauty assumed that learning self-defense techniques would come in handy. The situations were different, but the girl didn't want to rely on Noah every time, because the last time it almost ended in failure, which the beauty suffered. She did not understand why studying became more and more difficult over time and caused more and more problems. It is obvious that Amelie was too rash. It was necessary to think about everything in advance, instead of running away with words that in the end everything would end perfectly, exactly as it should. The beauty was tired of the failures that seemed to follow her in a long line. The situation irritated the young lady beyond belief. It was impossible to get everything at once, because, as you know, if you don't try, the ability to own a weapon or something else will not arise on its own, even if you try your best. This was the only reassurance for the beauty, who could no longer experience anything. My arms are incredibly tired from grueling workouts. The blonde tried to relax or get at least an extra minute of rest, but almost always it didn't end on the best note, because everything came back a day later. The fingers were red, and there were constant calluses on them, the girl stops once again to catch her breath. She realizes that even on this day the training was not a success precisely because of how difficult it was to cope with all the problems that fell right on her head at once. The girl could not believe that tomorrow would be exactly the same grueling day. Sighing, the blonde heads forward into the field to collect the arrows that missed the target. A keen eye notices that the arrows become fewer and fewer each time, simply due to the clumsiness of the one who trained with all his might so much so that many of the efforts simply went to waste. Squeezing the wooden things with her hands, the beauty almost breaks them into two parts, realizing in time the problem that overtakes her with every step, getting closer. At this rate, it won't take long to get angry and completely destroy the training room, so the girl decides to take a little break. 
Rest was one of the most important parts, just like everything else. Without it, misunderstandings arose that were more difficult to resolve. The lady was well aware of the exact situation she found herself in, so she was not going to risk anything. She gets up to go to her room and just lie down for a while. Throwing a case with arrows onto her shoulder, the girl passes by in order to get to the palace as quickly as possible and, of course, remain unnoticed, because no other arrangement suited her. Something along the way is incredibly eye-catching, even if the reason seems strange. In the distance, you can see a small house, which looks more like the one in which the woman used to live. She looks around and then quietly approaches the door, which is not open. It is open there, which cannot but surprise, but curiosity takes over, so the beauty carefully reaches for the handle. The room turned out to be almost completely empty. Dust flies around because of how many abandoned things are in the room. Armor and spears were what was most abundant, even if there were only a few of them in the specimens. Virgo looks around the room thoughtfully. She can't contain her interest because she would like to know how many soldiers there used to be who eventually died. Noah's story touched the soul, so the heroine became more sympathetic to the king, who did everything alone. The furnishings in the room made it clear that this place was used extremely rarely. Logic did not try to replace itself, because the absence of people brought with it a bunch of other problems that had to be solved, even if it was difficult. The beauty would like things in the castle to be as they once were. The day of the end of Claude's castle is very near. The world of the beastmen is at a loss, so it is logical that the king does not have enough people. He tries to protect those he has left, not even realizing that very soon he will have to try to protect himself because Prince Lumiere will try to kill him. The blonde catches herself thinking of regret towards Lionel and tries to push it out of her head. Such thoughts are not appropriate for a lady who will still remain in the status of a victim who is going to be killed very soon, without any regrets that could have their place. In the book, as in life, the animals had a hard time at almost every step. No one wanted to help those who did not behave properly. Lionel seemed much better as soon as he had the opportunity to communicate with him better, but at first glance the impression was terrible because the werewolf king inspired fear and horror. What is happening is very different from the original. Previously, the girl did not understand the whole truth, but over time, she became aware of what she had not received before. In the end, it is still worth sympathizing with those who will very soon die along with all their servants and people who will be taken captive in order to achieve a better life. In a past life, as a child, the girl was a rather susceptible child who tried to feel sorry for everyone around her, despite their status or privileges. The brunette spent almost all her time surrounded by her mother and the book, which still remained her favorite, despite the end of the story. The little girl assured her mother that the beast was kind, and then usually talked about how sorry she was for him for the way he was treated and because of the fate that followed the man on his heels. The woman never understood the logic of a small child, so she only laughed lightly, trying to move the topic in the right direction from something that could lead to strife. The beauty's eyes widen in realization. In this life, the girl fell into the same trap that was set by the guy who didn't even suspect it. The awareness of the situation could not help but sadden, just like the fear that was creeping up to the very heart that had long been captured. Such thoughts seemed absurd, so, trying to get rid of the obsession as quickly as possible, the blonde actively shook her head. Finding time for such thoughts was as easy as shelling pears, even if the lady was going to continue practicing to try a few more new techniques for wielding a weapon. Returning to the training field, the lady again grabs her bow and arrows. She was pretty tired of worrying so much about the king and other unnecessary thoughts. Sometimes, she just wanted to forget herself for at least a few minutes, and then return, as if nothing had happened, to take a rest. The arrow once again takes off in order to reach its goal. However, this time, she didn't even reach the target and fell about a meter away from it. There was absolutely no strength left in my hands to continue launching my anger at the target. It was worth finally admitting that nothing would work out, no matter how much I wanted to change something. The face shows disappointment, covered with a crazy smile. The lady realized a long time ago that she had a lot of problems that needed to be controlled from the very beginning. Progression did not show itself, but instead, regression finally showed itself. The girl couldn't help but notice that every time everything was only getting worse and more unbearable. Once again, in order to miss, without the theme that the heroine was in the mood for. 
So she grabs her bow and arrows and points it to the side, but then she feels something strange. Someone's presence right behind your back does not allow you to calm down, especially because the person puts his hand on his back and bow. Lionel is trying to show how to aim correctly. Virgo freezes for a few seconds because she's not confident in her strength, which seems to have exhausted itself long ago, just like everything else. However, he is not going to give up. The beauty straightens her hair and draws her bow again, hearing an order in her ear that now is the perfect moment to finally shoot and hit the target, which is what happens. The heroine's face expresses surprise mixed with pleasure, which cannot be hidden from prying eyes. After all, the lady is very happy that for the first time she managed to hit the target without any misses. The mouth opens on its own as she watches closely what happened. Emotions can no longer be contained because this seems too difficult for someone as intensely impressionable as the heroine. There is no limit to joy because you didn't need that much to be happy. Noticing the menacing gaze that is directed directly at her, the lady turns away, trying to hide everything that she wanted to say, only in a fit of happiness, which rolled up on its own, as if out of nowhere. The cheeks are filled with red, even if the king does not notice it, looking at the top of the beauty's head. The guy remains persistent, so he holds out another arrow, pushing it into the hand of the blonde, who blinks her eyes in surprise. Lionel orders to try to repeat the maneuver at least once more to be completely sure that it has been worked out. Virgo obeys because she understands that she has no other choice. She wanted to learn how to use a weapon, so now it's too late to give up what fell into her hands, almost just like that, without any effort. Confidence should not have time to disappear in such a short period of time. The heroine takes aim, while the blonde standing behind her grabs her elbow again, trying to adjust the angle of impact. This time also becomes a winner, because the lady hits the first time right in the middle of the target, which is not so far away. The reaction remains, but in a slightly modified form. The man has eyes, so he can see for himself that the girl has finally hit the target. However, he notices the fact that she no longer glows as much as she used to, as if she was about to jump for joy. This is a little upsetting, but it's also not worth it at all. Something has changed completely imperceptibly, so the blonde, stuttering a little, promises that everything will be fine, and she herself will cope with her problems perfectly without any delays. She promises that everything will go perfectly, so she is going to move on to pick up the arrow from the target. The young man carefully watches the movements of the beauty, who is about to pull out another one from her case. She assures that everything is fine once again, so that they can finally leave her alone, and the king can go about his business, which he probably also has. After a few seconds, the man says something, thereby stopping the girl. According to him, her muscles are very weak, so it is not always possible to direct the arrow exactly at the target, even if you really wanted to hit it the first time. The problem can be easily solved, but it will cost energy. The blonde freezes. She blinks her eyes in surprise, not fully understanding why the king decided to help, and even tried to explain how everything happens in this world, mentioning preparing the body for training with a weapon. According to Lionel, if you continue in this spirit, you can easily damage your arms, thereby exposing yourself and your muscles, which will find it extremely difficult to recover. This arrangement, of course, is not suitable, even if you did not want to devote too much time to preparing your body. Virgo lowers her head, thinking about what exactly she should do. What she said sounded just like a show of concern, which was for the first time shown to the main character. She had never experienced anything like this before, so she did not immediately understand how to react correctly in order to get what she wanted. Trying to get rid of the obsession, the blonde shakes her head in order to quickly forget everything that was said and what happened. She didn't want to fall in love or become attached to a person who was going to do the most terrible things to her, after which her life would end. Turning away and drawing the bow in her hands again, the girl steps back, assuring that she will be completely fine. She asks if everything will be fine if the man just leaves, since he spends a suspiciously large amount of time just giving advice to a girl who, in the end, won't use it. The Virgin does not understand why the young man continues to talk about how exactly and in what form he should try to do this or that, knowing full well that sooner or later the heroine can take advantage of this and try to kill the king in order to gain freedom and free everyone else from the terrible fate victims with blonde hair. The man grins lightly, which makes the girl instantly turn around to understand what they want from her. 
she will undoubtedly make herself look like a strange, uneducated person if she even attempts to do what is being said, because the chances will be almost zero, even with good preparation. If a Virgo really wants to do something good for herself and her body, she must first take care of building muscle on her body if she doesn't want to become exhausted, after which it will be impossible to even hold a bow in her hands. This should be task number one, no questions asked. Stepping back, the beauty begins to adjust the case, tightening the strap more to distract herself a little. Deep down, she understands that this is true, because the man could not lie just to fool the guest into doing pointless preparations, but the thoughts still could not leave her head. Virgo understands that the young man has a great advantage, even in the form of sharp fangs and claws that appear as soon as he transforms into a wolf, which helps in battle. In fact, you don't even need to make any special effort to get the required level of training or beat your other competitors. The guy chuckles. From his reaction, it is clear that the lady has touched the very point of no return, because he is silent. But after that, turning back, it becomes clear that this did not hurt the young king at all. The blonde wanted to see what the slideshow was showing in her head, but nothing happened. Turning away, the girl presses the arrows to herself. She understands that she had no right to speak in such a tone, because from the very beginning, she should have listened to the words that were spoken to her only to help her prepare her body and everything else. The guy moves back to the tree, leaning his back against it again. He wants the beauty to decide what she wants to do and not do something because others advise doing something completely different. Things go well only if the activities are for the benefit and joy of those who do them. Virgo, stuttering, tries to say something to answer the question of why she wants to do this, but over time she simply sighs, saying that she doesn't know. The only clear thing in all this abyss is that the lady fears that fate will sweep away her life as if nothing had ever existed. The girl was not going to do something like this, but if she was left completely alone, as in that case with the panther, she would like to have at least some chance that a miracle would happen and she would be able to fight to the last. Without gun ownership, this will not happen, even in your wildest dreams. The blonde looks thoughtfully into the distance. He chuckles and then nods. What the beauty says seems more than reasonable, because in this case she could fight those who do not mean well. This could not help but excite the nerves when one had to think about the future. What the lady said could not help but delight, because the decision was made correctly. There was no point in neglecting security, which could always fail because of the way people cared about it. Preparation was important, and now it became clear what exactly it was for this person. Passing by the hero, who didn't say another word, the girl just quietly repeats how strange the guy really is. She had long ago accepted that she was unlikely to ever understand his thinking, as well as his train of thoughts, which always seemed incredibly confusing to an ordinary person who was not unique. Just as she was about to leave, the lady was stopped. The blonde calls the beauty, wanting to say something, to which she asks to talk later, but realizing what just happened, he instantly freezes, trying to digest everything that needs to be said in the next few minutes. It seems that the young man just called Amelie by name, as if it were something ordinary. Such cases could be counted on one hand, because usually such things did not even happen, despite the way things were. Looking straight into the lady's eyes, the hero says that there are still many other ways out and options to protect himself. There is no need to blindly hope that this can be done only with the help of combat skills and physical strength, which was one of the most well-known factors. Knowledge is no less important, because only with its help can one try to translate into reality what each person is going to do in a dangerous situation. The king knows what he's talking about, because he's been in a similar mess more than once. The girl freezes, trying to quickly scroll through the answer options in her head. She is not strong enough to understand what they want from her, but it is clear that this is a clear hint that the lady is someone who lacks a mind that works correctly, which means it is almost an insult. After what was said, the young man did not say another word. Turning around, he walked away to leave some time and free space for the girl. She had to think carefully about what she was told and sort herself out. Memories flash through my head like a slideshow about the very conversation that the girl had with the king, when the man noticed that not only physical training, which he constantly talked about, is important. The virgin did not quite understand why those words were said, because she did not consider herself frankly stupid. Judging by what was said, it was obvious. Knowledge was truly one of the most important components. It was simply impossible to get what you wanted with force alone, 
because the people around were always smarter and more cunning. It was in this way that many managed to outwit the enemy and survive. After everything that had been said today, the beauty found herself in the library, where she had a specific goal. She set out to find a few books that she would like to read. There was no point in forcing me to read uninteresting literature, because there was no point in that either. Hyde was the one who led the blonde into the room because she didn't know where the library was located. While the girl stood with her mouth open in surprise, the young man came up from behind and, bowing, wished to have a pleasant time and benefit himself. The virgin moves on, looking around in surprise. Many shelves were lined with a huge number of books that were around so that you could easily get them and sit down at a table where you could read a volume of a work of interest or a ton of information. The man reminded that other factors are also important for self-defense, which is why the maiden received access to the royal library, which she did not even know about until that very moment. There were often similar rooms in the castle, but the heroine did not hope that she would ever see something like that. Lionel's actions remained as illogical as if Amelie had done the same. Letting a person into such a place and trying to make him smarter, knowing full well that you will soon eat him, was strange. It was difficult to understand the man, so the blonde gave up halfway through. Hyde, who never left, comes up from behind and clears his throat, as if making it clear that he hears everything. Such zeal on the part of the owner could be considered as a matter of dispelling the boredom that itself fell upon the girl sitting in her room. No one knows whether what the servant says is true, or what the heroine believes, however, in order not to arouse suspicion. She smiles. The voice from behind scared Amelie a little, who for some reason thought that the man had already left long ago, leaving the lady completely alone in the room, as promised. Perhaps this is due to the fact that there was a fear that the shooting skill would improve. Virgo raises her head proudly, as if it were true, even if she didn't think so. I needed to let my guard down a little and get him to walk away. The guy who usually didn't react to anything looks at the floor and then laughs lightly, trying to hold back the chuckles with the fist he has to his mouth. The lady can't believe that the man laughed, no matter how it happened and how carefully it was hidden. Instead of saying anything more about what was said, the young man hands over the key to the library saying that the room is completely at Amelie's disposal. After being here becomes boring, the lady can always leave the place and lock the door before going back to her room. Left completely alone, the blonde spins from side to side, lifting her head to inspect the upper shelves, which were almost invisible. Perhaps the most interesting literature was located there, which they tried to hide from prying eyes. Virgo looks carefully at the rest of the shelves, which seemed more accessible to ordinary people or servants who could reach every book in the row and read whatever their heart desires. The blonde walks further, thinking about how often the library was used in the old days, when the castle had a lot of inhabitants who were trying to find out some details about existence, just from books. The examination of the shelves and books dragged on for quite a long time, because the girl did nothing but wander between the shelves, only hoping not to accidentally get lost and end up somewhere else. She wasn't afraid, but she wanted to quickly find the literature she needed. Book after book fell into the hands of Amelie, and then was sent back to the shelf due to incomprehensible content that made her doubt exactly how things were going. The girl did not understand what to do, and did not know whether she would even be able to find a book that could be understood without any effort and horror. The search was unsuccessful, which led to tears and frustration that could not be hidden. Fatigue came out of nowhere, because obviously at least several hours had passed in the search, which seemed even longer and more tiring than in life. I wanted to go back to my room. Looking at the misaligned books on one of the shelves, the lady wonders when the last time anyone visited this room. Surely the library is checked much more often than the heroine initially thought, because there was almost no dust, especially since some volumes were also missing, as if they had evaporated from completely different shelves. The hand reaches out to a new book, which becomes attempt number 100. Before this, each of the volumes seemed terribly boring and poorly written, but without losing hope, the blonde is going to try her luck once again in order to finally find hope and become wiser for further learning with weapons and self-defense. The book, with its blue cover, looked more like the historical events that were described on the pages. This was also not in the girl's interests, so she carefully puts the thing back on the shelf, following further along the corridor. It seems that there was someone in the castle who was particularly skilled in what was found. In one of the books, there was an arrow that led to a description of the victim. 
the snow-white hair of the girl in the picture made it clear that she was the same as Amelie. What was written could mean that the library had books about the history of the tradition of sacrifice. Perhaps the young man allowed him to come here because he hid everything connected with the victims. There were no reasons for concealing what was written, however. In addition, the maiden did not know whether she should delve too deeply into the study of this story, because she could not change anything. Walking past the next shelves, the beauty involuntarily noticed that some of them were missing books that someone had taken. There are too many strange things in the whole room, but the lady wanted to know if she should be afraid of something extremely strange. Behind the door, which was very close, some kind of roar was heard. Emily almost jumped in surprise, but tried to pull herself together. Directly in front of the beauty, there was some kind of suspicious room that raised many questions. The lady grabs the handle. The room turned out to be closed, so the girl just ran her fingers over the wolf icon. Curiosity took over, as did every person who would be in the blonde's place. She wanted to know what was inside. Of course, the door will not open on its own because they are hiding something there, but another way could have been found. Perhaps all you had to do was get outside and look at the outside of the building to understand everything. The virgin instantly finds herself on the street, hurrying along the wall that leads to the very place that she was able to determine. The hand falls on the brick wall. The door was not visible, which made it clear that the entrance was only inside. Obviously, you'll have to forget about the room, but thoughts about what's inside still won't leave your head. It's a bit small for a pantry, so it would be worth trying to change something. The king could have hidden books about the victims in the library, but he doesn't have time to think about it because Noah calls out to Amelie from behind. The boy curiously examines the wall near which the lady is standing, asking what happened to her. Straightening her hair, the girl assures that everything is in perfect order. She didn't want to attract unnecessary attention to herself. A crazy thought comes to mind. One could ask the servant what was inside the room if such an opportunity presented itself. In the end, if the young man does not answer, his face will still give everything away. It sounded like a good plan. Finding the right words, the blonde mentions the door in the library, which she accidentally stumbled upon while reading books during the day. On the wooden handle was a coat of arms, which only proved that there was something extremely interesting there. There was depicted not just a symbol, but a silver wolf, which belonged to the werewolves that live in Claude Castle. The door appears to lead to the outbuilding they are standing near, so the lady quietly asks if the young man knows what is there. Noah smiles, saying that he doesn't understand what we're talking about, since he can't be called a book lover. He had never been this far into the library. Noah is silent, and then remembers that Hyde is the most knowledgeable in library matters that involve him. The girl is not sure that she can do this, because the man is gloomy and intimidating, but in order not to object, she promises that she will do it and quickly runs away. As usual, there was not a soul in the corridor, so the beauty could not ask where to go. She got lost. Passing by many doors, the maiden again notices the coat of arms, which is depicted on the door, which is probably also locked. It was still worth trying your luck, so the lady suddenly grabs the handle and pulls it towards herself. It's suspicious, the way all the doors were closed, as if there was a secret there. Perhaps the king is keeping someone under lock and key. Thinking about what could be there, the beauty did not even notice how a blonde man approached her from behind, who, as usual, was not in the mood. The girl's eyes widen. She quietly asks where the king came from in this particular corridor, as if from underground. Grunting, the young man extends his hand to the side, pointing towards the corridor. His chambers are a little further away, so this was not difficult. The royal chambers could not be in such an inconspicuous place. The girl assumed that the man was surrounded by a more rosy environment. The guy doesn't say anything, just continuing to glare at his interlocutor, as if he's about to say something, but can't gather his thoughts. Below the windows of the king's room is a botanical garden. While still a small child, the young man himself chose a place to live. The girl blinks her eyes. She finally understood what this choice was, and this greatly clarified the situation that had developed. After the guy became king, nothing much changed, even if one day he tried to change the room. He didn't get along and came back. The smile showed joy, because the lady was touched by how much the king liked the flowers, that he chose them. Lionel almost stutters trying to object. The whole point was that the man used to live there with his mother. He falls silent and turns away. It turns out that the place was connected with the memory of his mother, who had always been with the boy since childhood. The girl is not going to leave the boy alone so easily, so she asks if the botanical garden is connected with memories. With no intention of answering any questions, the blonde turns around, only saying that it's completely unimportant. Instead of continuing the discussion, the guy suddenly changed the topic, 
asking the blonde what she forgot here, since she lives in another wing. Bowing her head to admit her guilt, the girl says that she forgot exactly where she was and got lost. The young man freezes, looking with his mouth open, and then wearily lowers his head. He orders them to follow him into the distance. The blonde looks after the man as he leaves, without waiting for the lady to follow him. She understands that she should hurry. I can't believe that the king was so kind that he was going to take the girl straight to her room. Realizing that very soon they will part, the girl asks the man to wait a little, addressing him by name. Stopping, they both look at each other, while the girl asks what is behind that door where they were not so long ago. Instead of even trying to explain or do anything else, the guy rudely says that it's none of her business. The lady saw something similar in the library and noticed that some of the shelves were missing books. She became curious because it seemed like everything was a setup. The answer never comes because Lionel resumes walking forward. The lady tries to stop him with all her might to get an answer. If the lady continues to stumble upon oddities, her interest will only increase. If someone intends to hide something, it should be done more carefully. The man can't stand it anymore. He breaks down because the girl sticks her nose in everywhere, even if she was told that she was safe for two years. The whole problem is that these are just two years, which will end sooner or later. Not intending to listen to anything anymore, the blonde leaves, asking the girl to finally shut up so as not to get on his nerves. A sad look falls to the floor. The girl realizes that there is no longer a way out, so asking even more questions becomes dangerous. Everything had its advantages. It was much safer here, and generally much more comfortable than in Aurelian, where she lived in a closet. Perhaps what the girl is talking about sounds a little provocative, but that's how it is. She couldn't hide the truth. Freezing, as if something had happened, the man turns and asks if the beauty eats well while she lives here. From the very beginning, the girl seemed rather skinny, but for some reason she became thinner during her stay in the castle. The wrist seems too thin. Without letting go of the girl's hand, the guy turns around and drags her along with him. It doesn't matter what happens, because the lady is happy that they take care of her. Understanding and realizing what is happening, the blonde tries to stop so that she is not dragged further, asking where they are going. The guy is still silent. He doesn't intend to waste another minute, so he walks straight ahead. The door opens, and a table and several chairs are visible in the hall, at which you most likely need to sit to dine. The blond man walks inside, calling out to hide. He must give orders about what they will eat. The man asks to organize some simple meal, while the girl is surprised at how quietly the servant appeared. Pushing the chair aside, the young man pulls the lady along with him, and then pushes her, hinting that she should sit down. The beauty clearly does not finish eating, as she is carried away by other extraneous thoughts. The lady looks sadly at the floor, asking what he means. At this rate, the girl will die before the time comes in two years that worries her so much. The cook appears out of nowhere and apologizes for making you wait too long. The servants had just finished their afternoon cleaning, so they didn't think anyone would appear in the dining room. There are several beautiful dishes on the table that fascinate. This is all that can be offered for now. Not quite sure where to start, the girl quietly asks what they are because she doesn't immediately understand some of them. The king cannot stand further questions, so he orders them to quickly start eating before he gets tired of watching all this. For some reason, everyone around is trying to rush the girl, even if she is not that hungry. There was no choice. Waves of anger emanate from the man standing next to you, which seem too annoying, so you have to pick up the fork. Carefully cutting off and pricking one of the pieces of the dish onto a fork, the girl puts it in her mouth and almost immediately smiles. The dish turned out to be too beautiful both to look and to taste. There is a sparkle of delight in the eyes that cannot be hidden. The blonde sighs heavily because it shows that he's finally relaxed. The man turns away, saying that until the girl eats everything, she will not leave the table. The virgin freezes in horror. There is no choice anyway, so the sooner you do it, the easier it will be later. The beauty pricks another piece of meat. Next comes the soup, which has been waiting for its turn, so the beauty takes a spoon and scoops liquid into it. Sipping the soup, the beauty once again makes sure that the dishes are simply excellent. Turning back to the king, the maiden quietly asks if he is planning to fatten her well so that he can then enjoy the food himself. The young man does not answer, but a fleeting smile slips on his face, which is almost unnoticeable. The blonde freezes. Out of surprise, the grape that was on the fork slips out, because it is impossible to believe what she saw. It seems that the vision did not appear after all, because it was true. Lionel smiled slightly. A few minutes later, the meal was completely finished. It was so delicious that Liji couldn't even resist. The king nods. He promises that he will order that the same thing be brought to the chambers for the girl. 
Turning her head, the blonde asks in surprise whether this will really be done, to which she receives a nod of her head. The girl noted that the food would be cold until it was brought to the room. This is not the first time this has happened. If you think about it, then everything went according to the same scenario every time. There was no escape from this. By the time the girl finished eating, the food was completely cold and did not leave the same impression. Perhaps you shouldn't bother so much, because the heroine doesn't have such a healthy appetite. The guy chuckles and asks what the change is. He noticed that what was said was a lie. Conventionally, it is written right on the king's face that the girl is obliged to eat as much as possible. Taking a sip of water, the lady shrugs. She doesn't know, but she assumes it's because she constantly has to eat alone. The decision was made in a matter of seconds. Starting from the next day, the heroine will eat in the dining room and not in the room. However, then the lady will dine at the same time as the king, since he takes care of the cook and does not want to add unnecessary trouble. Hyde was about to leave, but Lionel caught up with him to discuss the details. The girl tries to stop him, but everything is in vain. Both men turn towards the guest. Their faces are somewhat similar because they both seem to be in a bad mood. What Lionel proposed seems completely absurd. No one in their right mind would ever dare to eat with a victim who was brought to the castle. The young man asks what the problem is, to which the girl tries to justify herself. She doesn't want the king to stoop to her level. What Lionel is about to do defies common sense, whatever it may be. They shouldn't try to change anything. The king does not want to hear about the contradiction from a girl who does not understand anything. This is his castle, which he himself rules. Starting tomorrow, it is decided that the blonde will eat in the cafeteria. Only Lionel himself sets the rules. Sitting in her room, the lady once again thinks about the problem that has now become urgent for her. It is almost impossible to change the course of events. Still, no matter how things were, the heroine did not remember the last time she ate in the company of another person. These were vague memories. Of course, the way things were before was not the best choice. It wasn't very comfortable, even if something had to change. Trying to get rid of the obsession, the beauty shakes her head, completely forgetting about Ilya, who steps back in surprise. The hair turned into a nest that formed on the head. The girl quietly asks the lady what is bothering her. From the very day that Elijah stood up for the girl, she began to speak more, not remaining silent. Sometimes this happened once a day, sometimes several, but even a few words were worth rejoicing at. In fact, there was something in my head. The virgin was worried about the upcoming meal with Mr. Lionel. Judging by the silence of the acquaintance, the lady realized that it was still a little strange, which could not but lead to a stupor and excite. The girl tried to object several times, but nothing came of it. Elijah says everything is fine. The maid is relieved, as she would like the king to eat normal food and not at night. The blonde freezes and asks about what was said. It seemed to her that the king always eats to his fill, and most likely, the best. Denial makes things clearer. The young man always eats in his room, and only because food is brought to him. Sometimes food remains on the plates, because the man has no appetite, so everything remains the same. The words of the young man come to mind that he wants to have lunch with his girlfriend. It was something new, and took on new colors after what Elijah said. I didn't want to go into details, but the man obviously turned out to be a liar who couldn't even admit the obvious. Not long ago, a girl said that she does not have the healthiest appetite. She lost it only over time. The man set himself up when he asked what the problem was, even when he didn't want to. The lady only noticed that she has no one to eat with, so she usually is not able to finish her portion of food. From that very moment, the king promised that they would eat together, which led the beauty into a stupor from what she heard. She didn't expect anything like this. Now, three times a day, two people sat in the dining room, eating with concentration, trying not to be distracted by each other. One day, the beauty couldn't stand it anymore and called Lionel a liar. He said that he almost always eats here, but in the end, it turned out to be a lie. Hanging his head down, the man assures that he never said such a thing, so you shouldn't try to stop him. The heroine tries to object, but remembers the words that were spoken that very day. This was not considered a lie. It turns out that literally the young man never said anything like that, even if he promised that from now on they would eat together. The guy only clarified about the same time that was set for eating. Nothing has changed because the essence remains the same. This is what served as the conclusion that the heroine received. She didn't mean to seem weird, but that's how it was. Lionel didn't even pay attention to attempts to explain the situation. He didn't find her interesting enough to spoil his appetite. There was silence in the room. The couple stare at each other for just a few minutes and then continue where they started. Continuing to eat the soup, the beauty remembers what Elijah said about the master's nutrition. 
The girl expressed her interest in the king eating properly to maintain his health. The man raises his head, repeating what Ilya said. The girl only nods in response, hoping that this will bypass her. The blonde was not so much interested in what the maid said as in what they were now talking about. Ever since the attack, the girls sometimes talk, but it doesn't happen that often. For some reason, the man's gaze suddenly warmed, but he himself said nothing more, just lowering his eyes to the plate. Everything that happened was incredibly depressing and spoiled my appetite, but it didn't change the fact that the food tasted amazing. Just about to leave the room, the young man stops to ask what the captive is going to do after lunch. There were no ideas, because the blonde always came up with the same thing, so she was going to take a walk and look around. The maiden had a clear plan that needed to be carried out. She would like to at least know something about that very door. In response, only grumbling is heard that this is not worth doing. The blonde won't be here until the evening, so you need to stay in the castle for safety. The girl nods. She is about to leave, but the thought that she needs to clarify the details cannot leave her. Still, without holding back, the lady asks if Lionel is going to check if more people with silver hair have appeared. The answer remains, as always, rude. Especially since the man adds to all this the phrase that this does not concern the captive. The girl did not dare to obey the new owner, so she went to the towers, where she noticed horses from afar. The area borders Aurelian. The man was riding horses with Noah, and they were heading into the city, so most likely, again, to track down the silver-haired ones. A picture pops up in my head when Lionel tried to provide first aid to the girl who was the victim. By the time it's all over, the lady will be forced to admit that despite her situation, she believes that the man is quite kind. The girl did not want to fall into a trap, but she also understood that excessive hopes could be futile and vulnerable. The hands are clenched near the chest to protect the feelings of the main character. She doesn't know exactly how to behave so that nothing happens. Footsteps are heard nearby. The voice is like a prince who is standing very close, just a few steps from the victim, who is walking completely alone. This is something new. Lumiere moves closer, while the blonde tries to move as far away as possible to avoid being grabbed or harmed. There was no strength to run, especially since everything needed to be found out. The lady quietly asks the prince what he is up to. The young man does not answer. He closely observes the actions of the captive, examining her from head to toe. The next step is that the blonde holds out his palm, saying that he has come to the rescue of the beauty. The virgin is asked what she will do, but no answer is heard. The eyes widen from the hopelessness of the situation that has developed. The man did not expect such a reaction. He came here to be thrown around his neck, because it is logical that the lady does not want to be eaten by the beast. It's strange that the young man intends to help. He was one of the first to try to drive the maiden away. What was done was the decision of the kingdom, and not the personal order of the youth, who is now justified. Everything that happened happened because of the father, who was not going to give a choice even to his own son, who would become king. The questions disappear by themselves. It is difficult to judge the situation, because in the relationship between children and fathers, everything is not so simple. The lady asked for help, so now the moment has come when she can take advantage of it. Help was never provided, because then in the forest, when the lady begged to save her, the guy didn't even turn his nose, remaining next to Lenoa. That day, the girl's world turned upside down because she realized how cruel Aurelian and his rulers were. Nothing happened. This was indeed the case that time, so the blonde had no right to refuse the way things went. However, the problem was completely different. Since the incident occurred, the guy has rethought a lot. He did not wish such a fate even for the victim. That incident allowed the prince to understand that he is just a cog in a huge world, which is also just someone's plan. The lady, without moving from her place, asks to explain what exactly they want to say, because she doesn't understand anything. It is difficult for her to build a logical chain. For some reason, Lumiere always considered himself a hero who was still worth looking for, but in the end, everything turned out to be completely different. The girl can't believe what she hears. She doesn't want to realize that the guy realized that these are all just actions in a book. This seems impossible, because fear simply takes its toll. Before drawing conclusions, you need to try to clarify the situation. Even if a man considers himself a cog, this does not mean that he is worthless. High value is something that is given to possess anyway. The guy wasn't just born to die early. In this regard, no one has the right to complain, since they are in a better position. The heroine does not need the pompous speeches that the prince is trying to push through under the pretext of being pitied and saved. Looking at each other, the couple is silent. The heroine has no choice but to hope that they won't kill her too soon, 
instead of understanding the situation, instead of a logical explanation or thoughts that fell on his shoulders, the blonde begins to laugh, as if he were told a joke. The lady asks what she said so funny, to which the young man invites her to change the fate that awaits Amelie. It is strange that she is offered such a thing, because most of the time the girl is watched by people from the castle, who closely monitor her. The guy clearly didn't take the army with him, even if there is a bad story that I don't even want to remember. The prince gave up what he could get, because he no longer wants to be a puppet to be manipulated. Proximity to the crown protects security, so this decision was not entirely correct. The way the young man behaved goes beyond all limits. The prince could not invade the country with which he was at enmity, all alone to talk. The silence remains the same, without any hints. The blonde seems to be thinking about what he needs to do. In any case, no one will be worse off from the beauty's return to her homeland. Everything will fall into place and be the way it needs to be. A man can say whatever he wants, but a similar situation can cause a conflict that will be impossible to calm down even after a while. There is still a sound grain in what has been said, because King Claude is still a little scrupulous towards people with silver hair. This would apply to what would happen in the next two years, but for now the lady was free to do whatever she wanted. In fact, there is truth because even the blonde knew about it, but no one actually knew if it was true. Noticing the concern on his interlocutor's face, the prince offers to hide his participation in order to make everything look as if the lady decided to return to Aurelian on her own initiative. The heroine had many contradictions in her head that haunted her. She didn't know what to do in order to decide to escape. If the lady remains in Claude's palace, she will receive two more years of peaceful life and luxury, but in two years, everything will end. If you listen to Lumiere and return, then the king's wrath cannot be avoided, so he can simply send the girl back to the castle. If this happens, then Lionel will most likely be colder towards the victim than he is now. The lady decides to postpone the agreement, so she asks what prompted the prince to do such an act. His words seem extremely dubious, no matter how you look at them. Ultimately, no matter how much the young man wanted to change the situation, he could not go against the will of the king. Perhaps the heroine went a little too far, so the guy opposite lowered his eyes to the floor. They stand opposite each other, trying to figure out what should be done next, despite the fact that everything is already clear to the girl. It's sad to realize that there is still no way out, and no matter how much the heroine wants to escape, she will not be able to live a normal life. Lumiere seems to be quite serious. If he becomes king, then perhaps the lady will listen to his words and return. This is hard to believe, because the guy was supposed to become king after the sacrifice of the main character. In the original story, everything was exactly like this. The girl does not want to scare anyone or put pressure on the choice they need to make, but tries to explain the situation they are in. By the time this miracle happens, the woman will most likely have left the world in which they find themselves. There is no answer, because obviously the young man is upset. He only says that he was away only for one day. Soon the blonde will return back. So the lady just has to wait a little to finally go home. Memories of my younger sister pop up in my head. In addition to all this, a young man can create problems for himself even in his love life, so this should not be done. The hero bursts out laughing again. It will be quite difficult for Lenoa to cope with such an extravagant spouse. If you think about that very sweet person who is your future wife, the prince may notice that they have not seen each other for a very long time. The girl wants to ask if this is true, however. Turning around, she does not see anyone nearby. She can't tell if she misheard or not, because if they haven't seen each other for so long, it's already a problem. The girl approaches the edge of the tower. The man appeared out of nowhere and then suddenly disappeared. The question arises as to how he even found his way here. Walking back, the blonde thoughtfully examines her shoes. She would like to know much more. What was much more interesting was that Lumiere had not seen Lenoa for a long time, although this did not in any way affect the way he behaved. What was heard only meant that the original plot of the book had changed dramatically, thereby changing everything around. Lumiere managed to escape surveillance and get into Castle Claude, which made him even more surprised. In addition, the guy came to the estate to help the beauty, which already gave rise to a million questions. This should never have happened. Initially, the blonde was needed only for the sacrifice, because she was only a background character. If the plot of the book changed, then even the importance of the girl underwent changes that were lost in its style. The beauty couldn't believe that the main character himself was interfering in her fate, who usually wouldn't even pay attention to her. Perhaps the envisioned future will also be completely different. No one knows this, despite how things have changed. There should have been no hindrances or changes in the book's aspiration from the start, but they appeared as if out of nowhere. 
Lumiere entered Castle Claude with ease, which was reckless. If the man had been killed, no one would even have found him. In the end, the guy remained the main character who couldn't risk his life without any variation. If the plot changes, there is a chance that the attack on the castle will occur much earlier than in four years. The man would kill the king, thus closing what was to happen much later. The awareness of hopelessness only pressed on my consciousness, completely preventing me from concentrating on how things were going in general. If you think like that, then if Claude falls, it will become more beneficial for the heroine herself. But she thought about it last. If everything goes according to the changed plot, the beauty will no longer have to worry about the sacrifice as a whole. Initially, Lumiere personified justice and kindness, so there was only one option for a happy ending. Whatever the reason, the development of events should simply accelerate, although perhaps there was nothing special about it. There is one more but that cannot simply be overlooked. The time spent with Lionel made me grow attached to him. The course of events is only accelerating, rushing forward in order to knock down everything in its path. This couldn't help but be frustrating. Tears were already ready to roll down her cheeks, but the heroine's suffering was interrupted by the one who was nearby. Ilya came into view and came closer to offer the blanket. Virgo asks how long ago she came here. Instead of answering, the girl throws a blanket over the heroine's shoulders and gently rolls her up, realizing that her body is completely chilled due to the wind. Kneeling down next to her, the blonde reminds you that it's a little cold outside, so you shouldn't be so reckless with your body. The girl looks around, noticing that the weather has sharply worsened. Because of her thoughts, she didn't even notice. The maid helps the mistress get up from the cold tiles and is going to take her inside to warm up at least a little. The girls walk along the corridor, but Emily is not even interested in where exactly they are taking her. Minor troubles have lost all meaning. Virgo thinks about her younger sister. Linoa seemed to be a headstrong and domineering girl, and therefore, most likely, she vomits and rushes, since she is not next to the prince. The heroine only hopes that her sister does not take out her anger on the servants, who have done absolutely nothing wrong. Still, breaking the silence, the maiden asks how things are now in Aurelian. Some news should have come from there. It will be difficult to talk about this, so the blonde recommends asking Hyde, who knows much more, about this. The man is in charge of intelligence, and from time to time reports the situation to Mr. Lionel. It seems that the king's entourage is monitoring situations concerning the silver-haired people who live in Aurelian all alone. It would have been interesting to know at least something about how intelligence penetrates into the neighboring kingdom, but this was not given. The problem was Hyde, who was a gloomy guy without any friendly disposition. The decision was made very quickly, so the heroine quickly changed clothes and followed along the corridor to the office. Despite the problems in her head that made the young man afraid, the girl still proceeded to the room to get answers. Raising her hand, the maiden lightly knocks on the oak door, which turned out to be unlocked. The man asks what Amelie needed. There was no greeting, so the beauty only says that she would like to know how things are in Aurelian. The blonde silently looks at the heroine, who wanted to add something else, but it seems she just changed her mind. Hyde didn't know that the lady was interested in politics because she had never shown even an iota of interest before. Be that as it may, it is better to let the interlocutor think so, so the lady decisively says, Yes. Pointing to the office, the man asked to come with him so they can talk. While in the office, the heroine carefully straightened her dress and sat down on one of the chairs. Tea was placed in front of her. The man poured himself a drink, and then, following suit, also sat down on the sofa opposite. Opening the book, the guy gets down to business. That year, valuable ore was discovered in the area of Mount Reno, which is located on the border of Aurelian. Due to friction over the ownership of them, Relations between the two countries only worsened, so the situation worsened. This territory is most likely captured by the Aurelians in the last war. In recent years, there have been active negotiations regarding the return of the property, but this is not what Amelie is interested in. She asks him to stop. The man gives the girl a menacing look, but she only grins and tries to explain that she was interested in something completely different. Closing the notebook, the guy, in order not to start talking, asks what information is being discussed. It was more about internal affairs, which also had something to do with it, so I didn't want to miss them. Instead of starting to read out the information, the young man asks if there was anything that caused the unrest. The blonde looks away thoughtfully. She assures Hyde that nothing like that happened. The matter almost failed, because the heroine very soon realizes that she does not have a single chance of fooling someone like a servant. In fact, the girl would like to know something about her sister, since she didn't even know her name before. The young man relaxes a little, just raising his eyebrow. 
It seems he expected something different. My sister's name is Lenoa. She was originally supposed to marry the prince, so I'd like to know how things turned out for her. The blonde chuckles. He completely forgot that Lenoa was Lumiere's fiancé, so he didn't even think about the story. The heroine nods actively. It is, so information would be very valuable. The man sighs. It seems that not very kind clouds are gathering over the house of Amelie's family, foreshadowing a hurricane. Concern flashes in the eyes. The lady was not treated properly in the house, but this did not cancel her affection. The details were not known even to the intelligence officers, but it was said that the planned engagement ceremony had been postponed. The heroine almost jumps out of her seat in surprise. She didn't expect to hear something like that because she wasn't ready for it. In fact, this was impossible, especially without a good reason. However, we can assume that the chances of breaking off the engagement are 9 out of 10. The blonde nods. She tries not to stutter, but does not understand what caused the changes. The prince's words come to mind. He remembered Lenoa, saying that they had not seen each other for a long time. Realization stops in the eyes of the heroine. She could not understand what needed to be done in order to see Lumiere again. Hyde barges in with questions. He noted that the couple cannot be called loving sisters, then the question arises why they are so worried about her. Obviously, the blonde is so virtuoso that he is even aware of the relationships in Amelie's house. This couldn't help but impress. The lady turns away, coughing a little. She asked this just in case, in order to be confident in her abilities. In the end, there was no need to make excuses, because despite the relationship, the girls were still sisters. Lumiere turned out to be more insidious than his father. The plan had long been formed in a smart head, but the rest were not destined to even know about it. The blonde lowers her head. She tries not to look her interlocutor in the eyes so that he cannot read the true answers. The conversation was over, but the thought still bothered the young lady, as if it was happening to her and not to Lenoa. In the distance of the corridor, loud steps are heard, which almost turn into running, accelerating the movement. The man is very close to Amelie in a split second, reaching out a gloved hand to grab her elbow. The heroine doesn't even have time to come to her senses before she is dragged to the side. The eyes fill with fear. The king seems incredibly angry, just because of his searing gaze, which speaks for itself. Without allowing the girl to object or speak out, the guy slams her to the wall opposite. The blonde hits the top of her head, so she screams loudly, still trying to stop what is happening. The eyes never stop sparkling, while the voice sounds more like a growl. The young man asks if the maiden had a meeting with the Aurelian. I want to scream and call for help. But thinking about it, Amelie realizes that Lionel found out about the meeting with Prince Aurelian. 